some Woolies staff may make the switch. We've also reached out to Romeo's Foodland, the other major store with, uh, within the town that's obviously going to be the sole provider of groceries for that community for some time. So they're probably going to be in the need of some additional staff, we think would make sense, particularly for the casuals who are working at Woolworths to see if they've got an opportunity to move across pretty quickly. One of the most senior UN officials says he's deepened negotiations to get humanitarian supplies into Gaza. All water and electricity is being cut off and international supplies are being held up at the border. UN Under Secretary General Martin Griffiths says the situation's dire. We need aid in. We need clarity about places of safety which will be deconflicted, which will not be attacked, will not be a part of the war between the two uh, sides. We need a corridor which people can rely on. Australian journalist Chung Lei has spoken of the moment she was reunited with her family in Melbourne last week. She was released from a Chinese prison after three years in detention amid claims she posed a national security risk. The 48-year-old mother of two has always maintained her innocence. Speaking on Sky, she spoke of the torment of being apart from her children. My kids running at me and my mum, who has aged a lot in the past three years, and we just all screamed and my mum like wept and I just held on to it. The number of Australians being prescribed medication for ADHD has more than doubled in five years. More than 400,000 people now take drugs for the common disorder. Doctors say the jump represents a backlog of undiagnosed cases finally being addressed by the health system. The question of why many people love eating fatty food has been tested by international researchers. Alexander Nimmo has more. A research team looked at activity in volunteers' brains while they ate a variety of foods with different levels of fat and sugar. They found part of a particular section of the brain was highly responsive to oily, smooth textures produced by fatty liquids on the surface of the mouth. They suggest future research could look into the designing of foods to seem fattier by manipulating texture and in doing so trick our brains into preferring healthier but lower fat foods. Australia will lead the first ever world phone amnesty which aims to raise awareness of the amount of mobile phones ending up in landfill. Research shows keeping a smartphone in use for an extra two years can reduce its carbon dioxide effect by 43 per cent. Kingfisher co-founder and chief executive Georgianne Regal says everyone should hang on to their phones for a few more years. Telcos all around the world have strong trade-in programs that they have launched. Unfortunately, most consumers today are still not trading in their phones when they get a new one, but rather the phones are ending up in drawers and landfills, unfortunately. Now turning to 5AA Sport. There's plenty of stock ready for immediate delivery on Mitsubishi Triton from Agostino Mitsubishi, Nailsworth and Elizabeth. Here's Tom Wren. Thank you, Kendall. Australia's World Cup campaign is back on track following a five-wicket win against Sri Lanka in Lucknow overnight. There was no shortage of distractions with players forced off for rain, dust storms and high winds, but the Aussies fought through it all, easily chasing down the target of 210 with almost 15 overs to spare. Josh Inglis top scored with 58, Mitch Marsh blasted 52, while Adam Zampa was the star with the ball, taking four wickets. Meantime, the Redbacks will resume day three of their Shield clash at 3 for 57 against New South Wales, leading the Blues by 167 runs with two days to play. Only two days left in the AFL trade period and Port Adelaide still needs to get deals done on several players, including Asava Radagalia, Brennan Zerk Thatcher and Jordan Sweet. Fremantle has strengthened its draft hand for next year, sending Lockie Schultz to Collingwood and Liam Henry to St Kilda. The Dockers now control three first-round selections for 2024. Club football manager Peter Bell says there'll be some exciting talent available next year. We have a strong hand and whether we use that to get further up next year's draft or potentially we might use it for some trade collateral as well. There's a long time between now and the end of 2024 so we have options and we'll look to use them in a really prudent manner. Meantime, Crows player Najwa Allen faces the biggest suspension in AFLW history over an off-the-ball bump which left her opponent concussed. Allen's been referred directly to the tribunal and faces at least three games on the sidelines for her hit on Bulldogs Kirsten McLeod. And Wallabies coach Eddie Jones will front the media this morning over reports he's taking up an offer to coach Japan. And that's the 5AA Sport. 
Another 5AA forecast. Beaumont's new showroom is now open at Seaford Meadows with 25% off all tiles this Saturday only. A sunny day heading for 22, sunny again tomorrow, 26, up to 30 on Thursday and partly cloudy for Friday, 27. At the moment, 6. More news as it happens on 5AA. Breakfast on 5 AA. Morning to you. Welcome to Tuesday on 5 AA Breakfast. Phil Curry's on the program this morning. We're going to put a big question to our trial by jury. We've got Harvest Rock Festival tickets to give away as well. Some of the hottest tickets in town. Um, I'm going to talk a bit of gardening to make you very happy, David. Michael Keelan, 5 AA's own gardening guru, will join us just before 7 o'clock today. Uh, 8 double two three double O double O is our number. You can text us too on the Dutton's text line. Uh, I, I appreciate scientists are trying to solve the mysteries of the universe. I just heard that news item a moment ago, though, that they've, they've turned their collective wisdom and intelligence to trying to determine why it is that human beings like fatty or sweet foods. Hmm. I reckon that we've got that one pretty solved, haven't we? Yeah, yeah. Well, is it an either-or scenario? Because No, it just meant all that. The category of foods we would, you know, us lay people would call delicious. Why do we eat them? Well, because yeah. they're delicious. Yeah. yeah I, think, I, I reckon we got that the, one licked, haven't we? That's the short answer. Although, you're either a sweet tooth or you're not. Mm. Like, I'm not, I could happily never eat sweets for the rest of my life. Mm. I never have sweets. Like, you know, if you have work functions, like, you know, you end up at the Adelaide Oval at um, Best of SA or something like that. I always put my knife and fork in a cross after the main. Never, ever, ever have dessert. Uh, very rare. Uh, good morning to you, and good morning to uh, our beloved listeners. Um, salt, fat, on the mm. other hand. Have you ever had rump cap? The the, mm, the triangular sure. tip at the end of the the rump of a of a cow. It, it, it's sold with all the fat left on it. Right. And the idea is you cut you cut it crosswise into big chunks, and you fold it into a crescent shape, and you skewer it, and you do it on the barbecue. Oh no, I've not had that before. Well, Sounds it's amazing. Like, it's like a Brazilian cut of meat. Right. You actually don't need to eat much. It's very rich, mm. but it it comes out about three quarters uh, meat and one quarter fat. But the fat, you cook it a mega high heat over charcoal on a charcoal barbie, and the fat renders and crisps up, and you have it with some chimichurri and some uh, fresh chili on the side, a bit of lemon sounds juice. Fantastic. Superb. See that? I don't need a scientist to tell me why that sounds good. But that doesn't work without without being one quarter fat. And the other thing is, yeah, the humble sausage. Now, if you make sausages yourself, bare minimum. In fact, it'd be a very lean sausage is 20% fat. Most sausages really? are 30% fat, sometimes 40% fat. And that, when I say fat, that is white chunks of fat that would render down in a pan and turn into lard, basically. The suggestion That's why makes sausages taste so good. They're, well, they're always half fat. The suggestion is that they're going to come up with faux fat. So well, fake I fat. I don't know about that. So potentially there's going to be a generation of people, I don't know, maybe 10, 15... 100 years from now, people would just eat <laughs> pure fake fat and sh what was we'd call once sugary sweets because they make healthy versions of them. That seems to be the, the future of f food. Risk-free fat eating. So you can eat fat three meals a day. Yeah, I don't know about that. You like the risk? You like to live dangerously? Yeah, well, if I suppose it, if it tastes exactly the same. If it tastes the exactly same, the same. What's, what's, yeah. the, what's the difference? Why not? I had a bit of a life-changing moment a few years ago. Um... A mate of mine were at WOMAD, and he bought me a, a vegan gyros. Oh, I know. You spoke about it on the air. Oh. Change, yeah, it was you, delicious. Yeah. Some, was of, really some of them do. They are amazing, some of them. But the thing is, I don't know. Like, I'd love to hear from our vegan listeners. But do we have any vegan listeners? Surely there's a few vegans who listen to 5AA. Do you reckon we didn't, we didn't get rid of them with seven years straight of Meat Tray Friday? Yeah. Meat, we did a did, we did a, veg, a vegan tray once, didn't we? Did the we? Adelaide Vegan Festival. Right. Yes. We did it alongside mm. the normal meat tray, though. The thing I can't cop is you go to the supermarket and you see all those nut meat things. Temp tempe, tempe, is it? The fo like faux meat. Yeah. Remember the early days of vegetarianism. Mm. I can remember going to like barbecues and that in the eighties and faux like, sausages. Yeah, and that, that stuff was like mushed up soybeans turned into a rectangle. Oh, yeah. And people barbecue it. Oh. Is, is, Some people that, see that it as sort of a, life for me. Sort of like a political statement or a philosophical statement. Well, I I don't. Where they say, oh, they'll, I'll never eat that garbage. 
Well, I would eat it if it tasted exactly the same. Yeah. I yeah. have a sort of a philosophical yeah, I, opposition to if it. If it tastes good, who cares what it is? <laughs> exactly. Like, I reckon tofu's good. Mm. Like salt and pepper tofu yep. in a Chinese restaurant. Bring it on. I feel about vegetarian, like, v- vegan alternatives like I do about electric cars. It's not a statement of my political position. If it makes sense for me. Yeah. Financially, and it works well. Yeah, who cares? If it tastes good, <laughs> I'm all for it. I yeah. couldn't care less. Absolutely. And if it doesn't, I'm not interested. <laughs> So I think, in short, cancel the study is what we're saying. Yep. Thank you, scientists. There's Your a lot work of stuff here is that, done. There's a lot of stuff that does get inquired into, and you think, what's the point mm. of it? Mm. You know, there was a there was a study read the other day showing out of England, showing that people who who rent how who rent um, properties have a shorter life expectancy than people who own their homes. Right, and I, I was, that would be. Well, I was reading and thinking that, that's interesting, and then I sort of read the pricey of the study, and the key finding was that people who rent have less money than people who um, who own their own homes, and it also said that if you live in rental properties, you you're not as active because you don't garden, you don't have the same stability, and then so the report was basically saying the less money you have. The less healthy you're likely to be, yeah. And I sort well, of thought, well, whoopee doo. That's, that's not the, actually that remarkable. <laughs> it's the most obvious thing in the world. So renting is sort of, you know, and it's a bit of a sweeping generalisation because mm. there's plenty of people who rent and fine, but it was. It just seemed to be like picking one of the byproducts of of having less money and linking and it making it sound like it was a cause <laughs> as opposed to a symptom. <laughs> yeah, it was funny. Right. I just thought well, someone's been years doing this. <laughs> 12 after 6, 822 is the number. You too might like to poke holes in years of scientific theory. Or you can uh, text us your thoughts on anything in the world of um, yeah. uh, what's going on. Adelaide maybe you've sport. got your own Maybe you've got your own theory. Maybe you've got your own theory. Love to hear your theories. Uh, love to hear from people up in Stirling too. Um, this th- story, so this time yesterday we were sitting here talking about the $15 million fire. It's up to 25 now. $25 million. The thing that interests me too is... Um, the, the impact that it's going to have on neighbouring businesses. Like, there's a whole bunch of businesses, including the butcher shop up there. And, and please, Hills listeners, tell us how this is impacting you because, you know, the, the, these businesses become part and parcel of life in a community. Mm. You know, like, I spent half my life talking to Manny at the fruit shop and Dave at the, the local butcher doing all the shopping with a family of six. Um so you've got Angel Arcus there, Baker's Delight, Chibo, Green Dispensary, Sterling Variety Meats, uh, Stock Pot and Sushi Light that are all, st- all there. The, the, the rumour among the locals... No, no idea how long until they can reopen. Well, the rumour among the locals is they might bulldoze the whole, that complex, mm. and build something bigger there with, with carping on, car parking on site. Because the co- so much of it is going to have to be rebuilt anyway, and the, the time it's going to take is going to be so massive anyway. I must admit, I... I haven't been into that shopping centre for probably 15 years. I don't know it um, intimately. But from memory, it feels like it's pretty old. Like, it, mm. it, it's not a brand new no, setup. No, no. It's not ancient, but it's not. Yeah, it's not brand spanking new. Uh, Andrew on the Dutton's text line. Three dealerships, ten franchises in the Adelaide Hills and Murray Bridge. Dutton's easy to do business with. It says, as long as the food is natural and not produced in a lab. Thank you, Andrew. No, I'd, I'd sign up for lab. Not fussed. <laughs> Seriously? The lab's just another kitchen. You'd eat, you'd eat a, a, a fake scotch fillet, would you? Made, made by people same, in a white coat. Absolutely. If it tastes the same, I would. I, I dispute that it can. I just don't well, think that, it can no, taste the same. Well, that's my proviso. I'm telling you, that's, that's, they're the grounds on which I'd do it. Yeah, but I just I don't think you're ever going to find yourself in that position. Maybe not me, but maybe in 100 years they might work it out. Well, who knows? Uh, well, what we'll be doing then? <laughs> well, we won't be doing anything. 15 no. after 6, news headlines are coming up in a moment. <laughs> If your business is customer focused, it's time to connect with the South Australian Seniors Card. Seniors Card supports over 400,000 loyal and active customers. You can grow your business and reputation by joining other local and national brands as a Seniors Card business partner. Your business and the iconic South Australian Seniors Card helping older South Australians to enjoy life and age well. Connect now at seniorscard.sa.gov.au. I'm Cathy Nagel, the Chief Executive of Western Hospital Henley Beach. Many people don't know that they don't need health insurance to be treated in a private hospital. Many procedures are more affordable than you may think, 
and access to a wide range of specialists and services is just a phone call away. So if you're considering surgery, there are various payment options available and we can arrange a personal quote. If you have questions about paying for your own procedure in a private hospital, give Western Hospital a call on 8159 1200 to discuss. Yes, it's just one little word, but at AusYes Migration, it's our favourite one. Can we help with partner visas? Yes. Can we help you apply for Australian citizenship? Yes. Do we look after New Zealanders who are now eligible for permanent visas? Yes. Skilled migration, parents' visas, visitor visas, status resolution for Centrelink payments? Yes, yes and yes. AusYes understands the system and is ready to help you. Go to ausyes.com.au. That's A-U-S-Y-E-S dot -E com dot A-U. Reimagine your home. Elevate your life at 88 O'Connell Luxury Apartments. There's two bedroom, two bathroom apartments now selling from $1.2 million. 88 O'Connell is redefining residential luxury with amenities never seen before in Adelaide. From a New York inspired sky deck, Mercato fresh produce market, wine bar, integrated wellness studios, sauna, pools and allied healthcare. To learn more, visit our display suite or inquire at 88O'Connell.com. Breakfast on 5AA, David Penberthy and Will Goodings. Know someone finishing school and looking for an apprenticeship or a traineeship? Visit maxima.com.au. 17 after 6, news headlines in just a moment. We'll talk sport at 6.20 when Rennie joins us in the studio. The humanitarian situation in Gaza is continuing to deteriorate as the Israeli ground assault is imminent. It's been over nine days since Israel launched its bombardment of the Strip in retaliation to the unprecedented attack from Hamas. Since then, over 2,800 Palestinians have been killed. Um, supplies are being held up at the border. There's, Egypt plays a really interesting role in this as the, the other land border with, with Gaza. They don't allow anyone to come across. Hmm. There's no refugees. They're very vocal about what happens to the Palestinians, but, but they, they won't, won't they, let in. Not really into humanitarian solutions. Yeah. The, apparently, the, 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 point, the biggest point of negotiation with other countries like Australia, where there's not something in the, somewhere in the order of 19 Australians in Gaza. Hmm. So if you've got dual citizenship, they sound like they might be open to at some point opening the border to dual citizens, but they don't want to import what they see as a humanitarian crisis. It's, well, you, can't, you can't have it both ways. I mean, if you're, yeah. if you're the next door neighbour and you're giving Israel lectures about how it's treating people and they're saying, but they're not allowed in. At the same time, saying, "Well, let them out. Well, where do they go?" Awful pictures at the at that at that crossing where the border is. It's just it's thousands of people with with, with luggage. Mm. You know, if you looked at it, a snapshot, you go, "Oh, there's lots of people situation. trying to catch a plane," but that's people with everything they own, presumably. Yeah. See, the, the problem is that Hamas is an organisation that Hamas does not support a, a two state solution. No, Hamas does not want Israel to exist. So, if you've got an organisation that is based in Gaza that wants to kill every single Jewish person, as they demonstrated the other day, that is a total existential threat to the state of Israel. Mm. And the good thing is, like, you know, I heard some of the, from some moderate, and there's many, 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 many moderate Palestinians, but we don't hear their voices, and they don't get the coverage that they deserve. I heard um, a guy from the Palestinian Authority saying that Hamas is the problem here. So if Hamas is there among all mm. those poor bloody civilians... Israel's got to get Hamas somehow, otherwise Israel will die. Could you imagine being the... the, the but, mo and we know there's varying reports on 40% or 48% don't support military action from Hamas and so forth. Let's say it's half, around half. Yeah. Imagine being one of the half that woke up the day after that oh. massacre last weekend, knowing what your life was going to look like, yeah, how much long, wondering how much longer it was going to last for. But how much does life actually suck? Like, just think about it. You can either be born, you know, Sullivan's Beach... Or you can be born in Gaza. Mm. Just luck of the draw. You can be born in Westlakes. Yep. Or you can be born in Gaza. Like those poor bloody people. Yeah, just awful. The damage bill from a fire at Sterling Shopping Centre, as we said, has soared now to $25 million. The two 14-year-old boys have been charged with arson. The Shop Workers Union says it's working closely with Woolworths to ensure staff can be found alternative employment. Josh Peake says with no other Woolies in the Hills town, there'll be more of a commute involved for some. We're talking 15-minute drives to either Mount Barker or to Arkabar. There's Marriottville. Blackwood's an option as well. So there are stores within sort of a 15-kilometre radius. The number of Australians diagnosed with ADHD has doubled in half a decade. More than 3 million scripts were issued for the neurodevelopment, uh, developmental disorder, should I say, say, last year. Neurodevelopmental <laughs> disorder. Uh, a I was making a joke about more people having ADHD. <laughs> oh, Sorry. 
Uh, a Senate inquiry has found prescription rates have grown 26% between 2020 and 2022. I find those numbers completely staggering. Like it, I, know, I know it's a thing, mm. but is it that big a thing? It's off the charts. It didn't exist when I was a kid. There is... How would I phrase this? I mean, it did exist in its yes hard form and it wasn't diagnosed as ADHD. It was just, you know, he's having a bit of trouble. But you speak to parents class. at schools and there's what I would loosely term as anecdotal suspicion about some of these diagnoses. Yep. I think that, that's an accurate yeah. way of describing anecdotal, it. Yes, very much People so. go, hmm, yep. does the kid have a disorder or is he just a bit rude? Has he ever been told to shut up and yeah. sit down and... Stop doing something. Yeah. Mm. I reckon there's a bit of that. Australia will lead the first ever world phone amnesty, which aims to raise awareness of the amount of mobile phones ending up in landfill. Research shows keeping a smartphone in use for an extra two years can reduce its carbon dioxide effect by 43%. Kingfisher co-founder and chief executive Georgianne Regal says everyone should hang onto their phones just for a couple of years longer. Telcos all around the world have strong trade-in programs that they have launched. Unfortunately, most consumers today are still not trading in their phones when they get a new one, but rather the phones are ending up in drawers and landfills, unfortunately. Why do we have to change your phone so often? Money. Well, for yeah, Apple. Because it's, it's the biggest company on earth. <laughs> It's the way they make money. It's amazing. Cars, cars used to cost what phones cost. When you'd get your first car, you'd, <laughs> you'd, you'd go, all right, I'll try to save up about two grand, $1,500. To, I reckon my first car I bought off mum for, for 1200 bucks. That's now what you pay for an iPhone. In, in 1989, I got a mini minor. The car example is a good one too. Because all right, think using that analogy, imagine if every time you bought a, a new car, they said, yeah, you know, with... You can pay this off, but over the course of the next probably two years, it'll stop working. <laughs> yeah. We, just, we, just we sign up to this. It might start just veering off the road a bit in a couple of years' time. Yeah, fair yeah. enough. It's going to get an update at some point in the next 24 months. It'll render it totally useless. It's the opposite of things being built to last, mm. isn't it? Mm. It's like clothes. The clothes that yeah. my daughter sells at the women's retailer where she works part-time, I reckon some of them after five wears, you chuck them out. There's all this flimsy foreign-made stuff. Do you think... I mean, part, obviously, there's a, it's a money-making enterprise for corporates, but clearly there's something in human psychology that prefers new things to long-lasting things. Like, mm. there's a churn factor that human beings kind of get a thrill out of, I reckon. But it's sort of mental, too, isn't it? Like, that's what I'm saying, yeah. But for some people, like, they regard something that others would see as old as being quite new. Sure. I think those people are often called men. <laughs> <laughs> like this, sh this shirt I'm wearing today, I think this is kind of new. Right. And I reckon I bought it five years ago. Yeah. I, don't, I just don't wear it that often. I couldn't tell you how any of my clothes are. I just wear them until I'm... In fact, I, I wear them forever and... <laughs> you wear them until they fall apart. My wife throws them out. It's like, you're not wearing that shirt. It's got three holes in it. Um, how about this? You're our resident... Throws Premier's 97. <laughs> that will never get thrown out. Uh, this is your our resident Halloween guy. Uh, households participating in Halloween are being asked to use pineapples rather than pumpkins as decorations. Farmers are pushing the idea to help offset a season plagued with issues. So they want, you know, you carve. Can you carve a pumpkin? I presume you can. A pineapple. A pineapple, should I say? Oh, mate, in the 70s, everyone knew how to carve a pineapple. You'd, you'd cut it in halves lengthwise. You'd scoop out the flesh carefully in a sort of semicircular shape. Then you cut across it crosswise and you get maraschino cherries and you'd, you'd make a yeah. pineapple boat. Is that what they're thinking about in Halloween? Making pineapple no, boats? No, they're jack-o'-lanterns with it. I think it's, it, it, it's logistically a really bad idea. A, an open pineapple sitting out on your front porch would be swarming with insects within half an hour. That's, that is a key issue, I reckon. Bad enough for the pumpkin. Pumpkins go manky pretty quickly. Like, they're in the shops already. Sweet and the pineapple. kids are going, Dad, can we buy a pumpkin? I'm like, no, because it'll be filled with bugs by Friday. You're going to have a rotten, festering jack-o'-lantern head on the veranda <laughs> two weeks out from Halloween. That is scary. Uh, Michelle on the Dutton's text line says, um, Will and Pembo, uh, my mum and I do the weekly shopping at Woolworths in Stirling, along with going to the Greens Pharmacy. The senseless act of the two young teenagers has now affected many people's routines. I can't understand their actions and why they'd want to destroy others' livelihoods. Hmm. Well said. 
Just shocking. Yeah, it is. Uh, Rennie's in the studio. Let's talk sport. Plenty of stock ready for immediate delivery on Mitsubishi Triton from Agostino, Mitsubishi, Nailsworth and Elizabeth. Morning to you, Rennie. Morning, boys. Will, David, um, have you caught up with the World Cup fever yet or it hasn't quite hit? Uh, Aussies won last night. They beat Sri Lanka, did they? They won. Sri Lanka looked like they were chugging along reasonably well. And then well, Cummins broke that... That, um, that was the key. Partnership. That was the key. They were none for 125 in the 22nd over. So going at six and over, looked like they were going to get 300, 350 easily. And then those couple of wickets, they lost 10 for 84, all out for 209. Aussies got it in 35 and a bit overs. So they won easily. So um, we're off the mark. Off the mark. But still probably need to win, I reckon, five of the next six games. So we're one from three. One from three. I reckon you need to be six from nine to make it. But we've Minimum. lost to... India and South Africa. South Africa. Crucial games will be against New Zealand, Pakistan, um, England, England, and there's one more there as well. So I think people will get into the Australia England game. Yeah, I think so. When it gets that'll a get closer, a, that'll get a, a bit of an audience. Yeah, but reeling from the loss against Afghanistan, England. Yeah, That's crazy, funny. isn't it? So um, you got to finish top four. a few four. Uh, happy Afghans up in Blair Athol. Well, it was the northern the, end of Prospect Road. Well, there's a bit of an Adelaide connection as well with um, Rashid Khan, of course, yeah. who took the winning wicket. He he had a great game, made 23 and took three wickets. But a good win for the Aussies uh, overnight, which was great to see. Cam Smith, um, yeah, spare a thought for him. He missed out on the season-ending live, you know, title, if you like. So he was leading it for most of the back half of the season, but he ended up losing to Taylor Gooch, who, of course, won here mm, when we oh had the yeah. tournament. And it's because Smith finished 40th and 25 in the last two events. Now, that means that he misses out on the $28.6 million first prize. Oh. Don't feel too sorry for him, though. He still finished second and got $12.7 million. That'll do. So it's not yeah. too bad. Which country did he get it in? Because when he got it in Australia, he had to give half of it back to the ATO. Remember that? <laughs> That's right, yeah. That was Taylor Gooch, wasn't it? yeah. He yeah. complained about it. Well, and I think the Premier made the point to us. He said um, the federal government should be pretty happy that we brought the Live Golfers here because of all the tax they got. <laughs> Jim Chalmers loves the golf tournament being held at Grange. <laughs> yeah. It's a huge, unexpected pay bonanza for him. Exactly. Two days to go in the trade period, still nothing for Port. The Crows look like they might be a bit more quiet, but Port... Time is ticking. 36 mm. hours left. Good stuff, Rennie. Thanks, Pl boys. On you, Tom. Plenty of stock available for immediate delivery on Mitsubishi Triton from Agostino, Mitsubishi, Nailsworth and Elizabeth. Beautiful day on the way here in Adelaide. Top of 22 degrees. Sunny patch over the next three days. 26 tomorrow, 30 on Thursday. Friday, 27 and cloudy. Saturday drops back to 19, potentially up to a mill of rain. Sunday, 19 as well. And then Monday, 22. Five AA News on the way. We'll be back shortly. Copper is critical to the energy transition, including the manufacture of electric cars, wind turbines and solar panels. The need for responsibly produced South Australian copper is clear. It's happening now at BHP. Visit bhp.com forward slash critical. If you're a worker, a walker or a seasoned traveller, you'll love these great offers from Grundy Shoes. Right now, simply try on a pair of men's or women's eco dress or casual shoes and you'll receive a bonus picnic blanket for added comfort while exploring the great outdoors. Plus, if you're one of the first 100 customers to purchase a pair of men's or women's eco dress or casual shoes, you'll also receive a free double canopy umbrella valued at $90. Grundy Shoes, family owned and operated, your feet are in good hands. Grundy Shoes, your iconic footwear destination. Every two years, if you're age 50 to 74, you'll get a blue and white package from the National Bowel Cancer Screening Program. It's your free bowel screening test kit and it could save your life. Here's what to do. Take it to the bathroom and put it right where you can see it. Not in a drawer, but on the bench top or on the toilet seat or in the middle of the floor. So the next time you have to go, you'll remember to use it. Please don't put off the chance to save your life. Get to it. Visit bowelcancer.org.au for more information. When you choose Keaton, you can retire with confidence your way. Whether you're after more space or less, a change of scenery or a new home nearby. Our retirement communities throughout SA offer many ways to enjoy your exciting next chapter. Choosing Keaton means choosing well-being in every way. It's choosing genuine connection and enjoying the confidence that comes with true quality, freedom and service. Explore our four South Australian retirement communities at keaton.com.au today. Reducing greenhouse gas emissions in the production of copper is critical and why BHP has committed to solar, wind and battery agreements to help power our copper mine at Olympic Dam, South Australia. Visit bhp.com forward slash critical. 5AA Breakfast is streaming live right now. To watch, simply head to 5AA on Facebook or YouTube. 
This is Adelaide's 5AA. Sunny and 22 with the 6.30 News, I'm Kendall Brettig. Hydrotherapy at Physio Extra Marion has individual sessions and classes claimable on private health and NDIS. The Israeli Defence Minister's warning the conflict will be long and the price will be high as Gaza falls into a desperate humanitarian crisis. Edward Godfrey is in Tel Aviv. There had been high hopes the border crossing between Gaza and Egypt would open, allowing foreigners and dual citizens to cross the Rafah border into Egypt. But those hopes were dashed this afternoon. Five UN fuel tanks were allowed to enter, but long lines of trucks carrying aid are unable to advance. There are reports this evening, local time in Israel, that Israeli troops have shelled that crossing area. No injuries are believed to have been recorded. Inside Gaza, there are growing concerns for the humanitarian situation. And the number of hostages believed to be inside Gaza taken there by Hamas has increased to 199 from the 155 figure which had been put out previously. In the north of Israel, there are growing concerns about the Lebanese border. 28 Israeli communities have now been evacuated with residents put into government provided homes. The food land at Stirling is set to welcome some of the staff from the burnt out Woolworths. The Woolies was gutted in a $25 million blaze on Sunday. The retailers working with the SDA to keep staff employed. The union's Josh Peake says the town's Romeos will be extra busy now their competitors gone, so it makes sense. So we're looking at an expiated induction and hire process because having skilled staff working in that store as quickly as possible is pretty important. And obviously we'll be assisting our members to make sure as they do move move across to new stores, particularly within the Woolworths group, that they're given rosters and hours that were the same as they were getting, so no one sees a reduction in, in any income as a result of this. A 77-year-old man has been flown to hospital after a motorbike crash at Willow Springs in the state's north. The rider's in a serious but stable condition with injuries to his torso. Around two and a half million Australians didn't cast their ballot in the voice referendum. Preliminary figures from the Electoral Commission show one in seven opted not to vote. Fines imposed on all voters would yield $52 million. Leading oncologists want genetic profiling to be offered to all cancer patients as rare cancers become more common. A new report shows 27% of diagnoses in the last year were classified as rare because scientists are discovering less common genetic subtypes. Monash University professor John Zoltzberg says the government needs to approve and reimburse testing as well as medications. That can be challenging because they're rare diseases and by definition. And because they're rare, there's less information about them, there's greater uncertainty. But nevertheless, we need to have these new drugs available to target these changes. The Gold Coast Mayor has met with Commonwealth Games officials as he continues his city's bid to host the event in 2026 after Victoria pulled out. Tom Tate has described the two-hour meeting as very positive with Commonwealth Games Australia Chief Craig Phillips agreeing the city was an excellent option. Mayor Tate says he's optimistic. You set the bar high and uh, then you go after it. That's always been Gold Coast attitude. We punch above our weight and this is uh, part of the journey and um, a couple of things needs to happen right, then we'll be on it. And if, a couple, if it doesn't bounce our way, well, everyone knows I have a good crack. And households participating in Halloween are being asked to use pineapples rather than pumpkins as decorations. Farmers are pushing the idea to help offset a season plagued with issues. Now turning to 5AA Sports. There's plenty of stock ready for immediate delivery on Mitsubishi Triton from Agostino Mitsubishi, Nailsworth and Elizabeth. And Tom Wren, I can't really see that taking off. No, I'm not sure about that idea. It doesn't sound like the best one, does it? Anyway, we'll move on to cricket for now. Australia's finally on the board at the Men's One Day World Cup, defeating Sri Lanka by five wickets. Mitch Marsh and keeper Josh Inglis both posted half centuries, helping Australia meet the 210-run target with more than 14 overs to spare. Skip Pat Cummins says they'll look to build on this result to get their campaign back on track. Almost all parts of the game came, came together today at the end, so um, yeah, that's the standard. Um, yeah, we're kind of underway now, we're into the tournament, so make sure we keep it up. The Aussies are now up to eighth on the standings and face another crucial clash against Pakistan on Friday night. 
to football and it's the penultimate day of the trade period and attention is now shifting to see if Collingwood could move on Jack Ginevan and the Pies brought in another small forward after they brought in another small forward in Fremantle's Lockie Schultz. Still no action for Port Adelaide who are looking to bring in a swag of players. Well, surfing legend Lane Beachley and Wallaby's great Mark Eller have been elevated to legend status at the Sport Australia Hall of Fame. Beachley, a seven-time world champion, says persistence paid off. When I was uh, in high school, my, my year 11 teachers said, lock up Lane's surfboard as a distraction from her studies, it'll amount to nothing. So uh, if I didn't continue to pursue my dreams and believe in myself and surround myself with people who honestly believed in me more than I believed in myself, then I wouldn't be standing here today. Yeah, what a story. And Aussie Jordan Thompson has recorded a huge win overnight, beating number three seed Alexander Zverev at the Japan Open in straight sets. And that's the 5AA Sport. Another 5AA forecast. Beaumont's new showroom is now open at Seaford Meadows with 25% off all tiles this Saturday only. A sunny day heading for 22, sunny again tomorrow, 26, sunny on Thursday up to 30, then partly cloudy for Friday, 27. At the moment, 6. More news as it happens on 5AA. Breakfast on 5AA. David Penberthy and Will Goodings. Know someone finishing school and looking for an apprenticeship or a traineeship? Visit maxima.com.au. 24 to 7, police and weather coming up. Also this half hour, Michael Keelan will join us. We're on Jacaranda Watch. It's getting to that sort of time of year, so the gardening guru of 5AA will be on the program just before 7 o'clock. A lot of Dutton's texts coming in over the course of that first half hour. Uh, one here from Peter in Moonta Bay, which I don't really understand. People could get confused if you've got a pineapple out the front. Is it Halloween or a swingers venue? What's the symbolism of the pineapple? Does that mean you're a swinger? Does it mean, is that what the, maybe that's what the, those banana boat, those pineapple boats you were talking about? Maybe they were very well, it was the seventies, yeah, maybe wasn't it? Maybe that's the reference. Keys in the fruit bowl. That's what that. they were served. Yeah, uh, we offended Quentin. It wasn't our intention, mate. And we're sorry. He says, "Dear Lord, I to just have naughty kids." Yes, ADHD does exist, and it's very real. And those figures are very real, if not conservative. How dare you joke about it, lads? Come live in our world with ASD and ADHD. Sorry, mate. We didn't mean to offend you. It's just our natural instinct towards. You know, and we weren't denying it levity. exists. No, we're, no we're we're pointing out a phenomenon does. whereby you speak to parents at schools and they suspect it's overdiagnosed. Yeah, that's right. Uh, Tessa in Paraka says about it, uh, and she works in the health space, many of the latest ADHD diagnoses are for adults who are self-diagnosing based on what they see on TikTok, which is ironic because the platform thrives on making <laughs> users have ADHD-like behaviour, chicken and egg. Um, we're getting a lot of uh, texts still from... Listeners up in the hills about the uh, impact that the Sterling fire is going to have on the community. Keep them coming, folks. Um, one here from Rob about the situation in the Middle East saying, guys, the Hamas terrorist leaders often live in safety and comfort with their families in Qatar and Turkey. Yeah. When is diplomatic pressure going to be put on those countries to expel them or act against them? And uh, starting the show talking about vegetarianism and uh, synthetic meat products, Kaz in Brompton says... Morning all. Back in the dim, dark past, i.e. my early 30s, uh, during my vegetarian and reduced caffeine stage, <laughs> mum made the best spag bowl from TVP textured vegetable protein. Ooh. Apparently tasted all right. Uh, <laughs> Kez says, however, my life has since returned to total caffeinated hedonism regarding food and drink, that is. Good on you, Kez. Kez. Welcome, Welcome back. back to the dark side. Yeah. Uh, thanks to, to Dutton's three dealerships, ten franchises in the Adelaide Hills and Maybrids. Dutton's easy to do business with. Steve has called in on the uh, the Woolly Shopping Centre at Stirling. Steve, we did you shop there, mate? Uh, g'day. Uh, yeah, no, no, I don't shop, shop there myself, um, but my daughters, they work for Woolies up in Mount Barker. And they were, uh, they've been telling me that since, uh, since the incident on the weekend that um, some of the casuals there are going to be losing some hours to make room for some of the staff to work up there. Oh, so some of the, some of the permanent uh, staff are going to move from Sterling to, to the Mount Barker store, mate? Uh, well, the Mount Barker store are going to make room for uh, give hours to some of the staff that work at Sterling. Mm, yeah. Um, so, so some of the casuals that work at uh, Woolworths up Mount Barker, Mount Barker South, they're... Um, They'll, they'll lose some hours for that. How do the staff at Mount Barker feel about that? Uh, I don't know. I don't talk to myself, but I'm sure that probably concerns them a bit because uh, they're going to have to find some more uh, work, work, potentially work elsewhere to uh, to pay the bills. Mm. Yeah, the, the number of people, like... The flow-on effect's massive, isn't it? When you think about a standard supermarket, we'll probably employ at least 
50 people, mm. wouldn't it? Yeah, possibly more. Depending on the on, size. The roster system, they're not all on all the time, so. Yeah, or well, some of them are tiny, some of them are massive. Mm. But it's a pretty, it's a big supermarket, the one in Sterling. So thank you for that, Steve. Uh, if you are affected up in uh, the hills by the fire there, and of course, you know, as we mentioned a little bit earlier, it's not just the Woolworths. The Woolworths is where it started and copped the brunt of it. But there are a host of other businesses that will be affected in the, the, the village there. Angelakis Brothers. Baker's Delight, Chibo, Green Dispensary, Sterling Variety Meats, Stock Pot and Sushi Delight. If you run or work at any of those businesses, maybe you've got kids like Steve that, that, that do, we'd love to hear what, what this means for you. Mm. We want to hear some stories of people affected this morning. 8223 You can text us too on the uh, on the Dutton's text line, 0448 A really good mate of mine, Gavin Williams, he owns the wonderful bookstore there, Matilda Books, which is just down... The road from where all this happened, you, you, you sort of you you wonder about the the impact that it's going to have around the whole area. Mm. You know, I mean, I, I know that's not like smack bang next door to it. It's not affected directly by the fire, but you know, businesses rely on foot traffic. You know, you often buy something because you just happen to be walking past some somewhere and you see something in the window that you like. You had no intention of buying it. Next thing you know, you come home with a cookbook or a you know a new top or something. So um, very sad for, for the whole community up there. I'm not sure Paul McCartney has many days he wakes up and regrets how much money he's made or thinks, you know, there was lost opportunities, I could have made more. But I wonder what he makes of the music industry these days. Taylor Swift's era's concert tour has been a phenomenon so large it's affected, you know, the, the, the gross state product of small states in the United States. It's, there's, there's demonstrable economic outcomes from her just arriving in your city to play a concert. So big is the pool of people and the nights and uh, uh, days in holiday uh, in hotels and so forth. Uh, it's a big phenomenon. But the Beatles were big too. They dragged large numbers of people to concerts and got people out of their seats and beds. But they, you can monetize your fame in a way these days that you couldn't back then. For example, Taylor Swift's film about her current concert tour has just debuted as one of the top 10 opening movies of the year. <laughs> it's called Like the Tour Eras. Welcome to the Eras Tour! bit of behind the scenes footage as well but largely you're going to watch the concert that you otherwise would see live so it opened if, if you could get tickets that is that's right it opened in cinemas uh with somewhere between 95 and 97 million dollars and i said as i say if it was 97 million dollars it's in the top 10 films that have opened this year now you think of what a big budget hollywood blockbuster costs to put together crew film so that means it's, it's up there with barbie yeah oh well yeah it is it's in the same list as barbie not too far one. removed. <laughs> Just looking at that, the, the number of the comparison with Paul McCartney, Paul McCartney has 11.6 million monthly listeners on Spotify. Mm. The Beatles have 29.6 million. So the band regarded as the greatest band in history has 29.6 million monthly listeners. Taylor Swift has 100 million. 100 million, four, four times as many as the Beatles. Yeah, yeah. But it's an age thing, isn't it? Because well, people who like the Beatles, they're less likely to be streaming it on Spotify. They might have the, the album of Taylor the White Swift. Record. Yeah, that's right. Taylor Swift fans are all, you know, overwhelmingly part of the digital generation. Is, is, I was talking about this with someone yesterday. Is Paul McCartney the greatest living songwriter in the world? Here in Adelaide right now. Well, the only other two that would come close, I reckon, are um, Bob Dylan and Brian Wilson. What is there anyone we've missed, folks? Eight double two three double O double O. We is he staying up in the Adelaide Hills right now? The greatest musical songwriter in human history. Well, it's him versus Dylan, isn't it? Yeah, and that with an honourable mention to Brian <laughs> for writing "God Only Knows" and a few other. And I reckon there'd be a large him. number of Beatles fans that'd go, "What?" But I'm with you. But you and I, Bob Dylan fans, so. Oh, no, I think Paul McCartney would agree that it's him and sure. him versus Bob. But I reckon a lot of mainstream Beatles pop fans would go. Come on. Well, even if you don't like Bob Dylan's voice, you've got to accept that as a songwriter, he's superb. You know, you think about uh, To Make You Feel My Love. Mm. You know, like a lot of people would know that from the Adele cover. Mm. That song's astonishing. But when you hear him do it, it's on Time Out of Mind. 
Like, when the rain is falling and Because <laughs> Kate loves that song. And mm. I said, you know who wrote that song? She goes, who? I said, I'll play it for you. Yeah. And I put it on. She's like, turn that off. I said, no, you've got to respect that this is Bob. He wrote the song. <laughs> But it's a different version with his voice. Paul has written 1,059 songs. That's a lot of songs. That's a it? lot of songs. Mm. How much? So if they're three minutes through a long each, how many? Okay, yes. how, <laughs> Several it, days worth of music. That out in a second. Uh, Daniel's called in. Morning to you, Daniel. Good morning. Uh, J- Jagger Richards wipes the floor with Lennon McCartney. No, oh, the old Beatles v. Stones. Oh, Stones. Fighter. Thank you, Thank you Daniel. <laughs> Uh, let's go to John. Morning, John. Morning, uh, living uh, songwriters. Um, Barry Gibbs surely must be up there, the amount of songs they wrote for everyone. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Good addition. The Gibb brothers. Uh, Barry's the only one living, I think, isn't he? Mm, yes, that's right. Yeah, yeah. Keep him coming in. Uh, Elton John and Bernie Taupin as well. That's a good one. Uh, Neil Diamond as well, suggested by, by Rob. And uh, Gav... Uh, <laughs> this is funny. He reckons Joe Dolce. That's a matter for you. <laughs> Shut up of your face. I can't. I can't name another Joe Dolce song. No, like Gav. maybe it's you know quality, not quantity. Could be uh, Gav's submission. A few nominations for Paul Simon as well. All right, let's uh, let's check traffic. Thanks to Keezer. Are you tired of back pain? Time to try Keezer. K i e s e r dot com. Today, you. Thanks, Will, and good morning. Crash to look out for this morning at Port Adelaide, Francis Street near Perkins Drive. That side of that roads are working well today. Northern Connector looking the goods. The freeway accident a breakdown free. Really good run too from Mount Barker through to Glen Osborne. Do have a lane closed at Norwood to look out for the parade near Queen Street. And look out for early morning cameras, Alawana Avenue, Mitchell Park, and Cliff Street at Glen Gowrie. That one's in a fifty zone too, so keep that in mind. Accelerate your drive with Mercedes. AMG with complimentary registration, CTP and stamp duty on select models for a limited time. Visit your local retailer today. T's and C's apply. Adelaide's most accurate traffic on 5AA. I'm Cathy Nagel, the Chief Executive of Western Hospital Henley Beach. We all hear that access to general practitioners is increasingly difficult. Healthcare costs are escalating and many question the value for money when accessing GPs. Western GP Clinic are proud to boast a level of care and expertise encompassing a holistic approach whilst providing a value option. To discuss your GP questions, call 1300 934 325. That's 1300 934 325 or visit westernhospitalgp.com.au. City Discount Tires. Get saving this month at City Discount Tires. Grab three Falcon Zeke ZE310R passenger car tires and get the fourth tire absolutely free. Experience top notch performance with exceptional grip on both wet and dry surfaces. Steer your way to citydiscounttires.com.au for even more great deals. City Discount Tires, we're driven by value. Needless to say, David, we are massive fans of PureTap. That's right. Don't get me started. They're a great local company, part of the 5AA family. They make our water more beautiful, clean, fresh and healthy drinking water. They make Adelaide more beautiful and they make the prices pretty beautiful too. How good is this? A PureTap from only $49 up front, which is incredible value. That's right. Agree. A PureTap from only $49. I've got one myself. And the $49, what can you get for $49 these days? <laughs> it includes a designer tap, installation and filters for two years on a great payment plan. Designed and manufactured right here in Adelaide. It's a world-class product that we are proud to be associated with. Simply call PureTap on 133502 or go to puretap.com.au. Some T's and C's apply. Yes, it's just one little word. But at AusYes Migration, it's our favourite one. Can we help with partner visas? Yes. Can we help you apply for Australian citizenship? Yes. Do we look after New Zealanders who are now eligible for permanent visas? Yes. Skilled migration, parents' visas, visitor visas, status resolution for Centrelink payments? Yes, yes and yes. AusYes understands the system and is ready to help you. Go to ausyes.com.au. That's A-U-S-Y-E-S dot com.au. Breakfast on 5AA. David Penberthy and Will Goodings. Jobs, apprenticeships, traineeships and careers. Maxima can help. Learn more today at maxima.com.au. 11 to 7. Let's talk weather. Simon Timkey at the Weather Bureau has all the details for us. Simon, good morning. Looks like a beautiful Adelaide day on the way. 
Good morning, Will. Will. Morning, David. Uh, Certainly plenty of sunshine about the place today. A little bit of a cold start. We had a minimum temperature of 5.9 degrees uh, in the city here just before 6.30, currently sitting on 6.2. But it's a bit colder about the hills in the northern suburbs. Mount Lofty's been down to 3.3 degrees, Parafield 4.2 degrees. So a little bit of a chilly start. Um, But uh, the sun's uh, just starting to uh, to get over the hills there now and uh, and we'll see the temperatures slowly start to, uh, to rise, expecting a maximum temperature of 22 degrees for the city today, uh, 21 degrees for Glenelg, Mount Barker and Norlunga, 23 degrees for Elizabeth, with winds uh, east to north easterly uh, and not too strong, getting up to around 15 to 20 kilometres per hour, but we'll see the, the winds turn around southwesterly during the afternoon with a, a, a bit of sea breeze coming in. Uh, more sunny days on the way for Wednesday and Thursday and getting a bit warmer too as our winds tend around more north easterly, uh, 26 degrees the maximum for Wednesday. 30 degrees for Thursday, not so cold in the mornings either, minimum of 11 for Wednesday, 13 for Thursday morning. So sunny days ahead for Wednesday and Thursday. Friday we'll see a a change move across, but it will bring some cloud, but I expect conditions will still remain dry as the north-easterly winds turn around more west to south-westerly. 27 degrees the maximum Friday after a fairly warm night with a minimum of 17. Uh, And then over the weekend, one or two showers around for Saturday and quite a bit cooler, 19 degrees. Sunday, a bit of cloud around, maybe just a slight chance of a shower, but I think mostly dry for for Sunday, 19 degrees as well. Big cooler for the weekend. Good stuff, Simon. Thank you. All right, let's head to Safe Pulse. Senior Constable Jen Cullinan's on the line. Jen, uh, shots have been fined at Salisbury Downs. Yes, that's right. Good morning. Uh, This was at 9.50 last night. Police were called to Spain's Road after witnesses heard multiple gunshots. And when police arrived, they discovered three shots had been fired hitting a fence. Now, the occupants of that address weren't injured. And a witness reported seeing a small, dark-coloured hatchback leaving the scene and heading towards Salisbury Highway. Crime scene investigators did attend the scene last night and investigations are continuing. But the incident is not believed to be random. But we do ask if anybody saw anything suspicious to please call Crime Stoppers on 1800 333 000. Jen, also there's been a car fire at Broadview. Yes, and that was about 4.20 this morning. Police and MFS were called to Tarkan Avenue after reports of Holden Commodore was on fire in a driveway. Now, fire crews managed to extinguish the blaze, but there's been extensive damage caused to that vehicle. Uh, forensic investigators will attend today. And again, anyone who saw anything to call Crime Stoppers at one 800 0 Good stuff, Jen. Thank you very much for that. Have a good Thanks, day. Thanks, guys. You too. Bye. Uh, well, gee, there's a lot of anger about the Stirling fire. A lot of Dutton's texts coming through with people that are rightly upset about the two kids that burnt down that shopping complex. Graham says, do these juveniles that caused the supermarket fire get three smacks instead of two? Seeing the fire value has increased from 15 to $25 million. Well, that's presuming they're going to get a smack at all. Graham, Jane with a Y doesn't think they will. I suppose those little you-know-whats that caused the fire at Stirling will get off with a slap on the wrist. I'd like to know what the parents think of what these idiots have done. So much distress and havoc caused with probably little consequences. We must hear what happens to the culprits. We, we, we're never going to find out who they are because of the way the youth court works. Their identity will, will remain a mystery. Um, and I suppose that's, that's there for a reason in the law. Um, but um, we do know they're local kids. Mm. So they're not like kids who've gone up from town on some mad spree. They, they, they live, by the sounds of it, in the, in the local community. Um, I don't know, some people might actually think that a degree of shaming would actually probably be the best punishment well, slash deterrent I, in cases like if this. If they're from Stirling, I reckon everyone in Stirling will know who they are. Yeah. Word gets around pretty it's fast, It's not the kind of place where you can re- remain anonymous. Yeah. So people, they, yeah, people would know, wouldn't pe- they? People would 100% know. So there would be that would be happening, I'm sure, anyway. Yeah. But... Well, I mean, it, yes, just terrible. Yeah, just awful. Uh, eight double two three double o double o the number. Lots of nominations for the greatest living songwriter. We've got Paul McCartney here. You know, up in the hills this morning, waking up, looking at the sun, the the sunrise on a beautiful Adelaide day. Here comes day. the sun. We, exactly. Well, that was well, George. That was George, wasn't it? Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, we're wrong, talking about wrong song. <laughs> greatest living s- song um, uh, writers this morning. We've had a couple of nominations. Some serious, some less so. So Dolce got a nomination a short time ago. A few more coming through on the uh, on the text line as we speak. Uh, like this one from Rich in Kidman Park. Uh, what about John Williams, the movie composer for Star Wars, Indiana Jones, etc.? 
or Sir Andrew Lloyd Webber. I'm just not sure they how to compare them with Sir Paul. Love the show. Good on your it's all, You're you. right. It's all music. I guess. We're, I guess the question's more framed around pop music, isn't it? You know, music for popular consumption. Yeah, yeah, popular. Because popular I, song. John Williams is in a, certainly in a class of his own when it comes to, you know, writing scores for films. It's Mark from Don Greenwith. Bradman. Yeah, that's right. Mark from Greenwith suggested Burt Bacharach, although he died a year or so ago. We're saying right. living. We're saying living. Greatest living songwriter. Uh, uh, Simon and Tanunda. He's, um, oh, I like this one. He says Neil Young. Neil Young? Yeah. Mm. I love Neil Young. We've got a nomination for this and man. From little things, big things. Ninth of October, we've got tickets for you to get along and you get, and potentially be upgraded to the Harvest Lounge VIP package. We'll draw that on Friday, but right here and now, we've got some tickets to give away. So get calling eight double two three double o double five if you'd like to get along to Harvest Rock. Secret Sounds presents Harvest Rock Two. Get your tickets now from harvestrock.com. David was there for Harvest Rock One, of mm. course. Yes, I was. Apparently. <laughs> Less said about that, the better. <laughs> no, you could oh. say that it was a, an excellent, it was an enjoyable experience. Big thanks to Sapol. They were terrific help that night, mm. finding, finding my wife after I misplaced her for a couple of hours. I reckon being a copy, you'd see some funny things. How's this? So, on Friday night, this was so funny. Uh, my daughter's boyfriend had his 21st. Happy birthday, James. In fact, his birthday's today. He's a legend of a bloke. He's doing a great job uh, working as a, as a tradie, doing a landscape and gardening business that he started with his own initiative and enterprise. It was good to see a young, self-starting bloke having a crack. Anyway, for his 21st, the theme of the party was America. He had to go mm. as something, dressed as something inspired by or associated with America. So my old man and I went as Jake and Elwood, the Blues Brothers. Mm. Got the fedoras and the, the Wayfarer sunnies and the black suits and ties. James's dad went as Walter White. Oh, fantastic. And he had the full yellow, from Breaking Bad, mm. so he had the full yellow hazmat suit and the giant air filter mask as if he was making crystal meth in the TV series Breaking Bad. <laughs> anyway, at about, at about quarter to 11, because the music was pumping at their house. It was a party at home. <laughs> The cops turned up because there's been a noise complaint. So James's old man, and I was standing there chatting to him, he knew to answer the door, dressed as dressed Walter White. Dressed as a person who works at a meth lab. <laughs> and there's these two coppers there from Sapol. One of them's just like got a grin on his face from ear to ear. And I, I, I leant forward and I said to the copper, don't worry, it's not actually a meth lab. <laughs> and the cops were just, they said, look... Don't, we're not worried about the music. The party had been registered. They said, just maybe just turn down the bass a bit. Yeah. But they they were just terrific. And they yeah, didn't come back because the kids turned it down, did the right thing. But you'd see so much being a cop, wouldn't you? Uh, Michael and Lewiston has won the tickets today for Harvest Rock 2. Secret Sounds presents Harvest Rock 2. Get your tickets now from harvestrock.com. The butcher there at Stirling that was affected by the fire is going to join us immediately after 5AA News in our news wrap. That's coming up. Back in a moment. I was just doing my job. I didn't think I'd get injured. The doctor said it was a routine procedure. <laughs> right. The car came out of nowhere and it smashed right into us. At DBH Lawyers, we're here to listen to your story. Our team of local South Australian lawyers will help you navigate the law and find the best way forward. We're with you. We're for you. We're DBH Lawyers. Dbh.com.au. Get into Ranella Mazda for a huge range of BT50s. New or demo or reduced, in stock ready for immediate delivery. With $2,000 of genuine Mazda accessories with every new BT50 sold. Hurry, only at Ranella Mazda, Main South Road, Ranella. LVD 152780. In tough times, it's the simple things that make a big difference. Like $17 schnitzel days at Birkenhead Tavern, Excelsior and the Lighthouse Wharf. We know the humble schnitty can't fix all our problems, but we do know it'll put a smile on your dial. $17 schnitties Mondays, Tuesdays and Wednesdays at Birkenhead Tavern, Excelsior and the Lighthouse Wharf. Making the world a better place. One schnitty at a time. Gotta start somewhere. You just know it's a Barreau Hotel. Hello. 
Frank Walker from National Tiles. For October only, the manufacturers of our fabulous 20mm thick outdoor pavers have had to halve the prices for National Tiles customers exclusively. Yes, for October only, the manufacturers of our fabulous 20mm thick outdoor pavers have up to halve the prices for National Tiles customers exclusively. Easy to lay and easy to clean, National Tiles fabulous outdoor pavers at up to half price. But only for October and only at National Tiles. 5AA Breakfast is streaming live right now. To watch, simply head to 5AA on Facebook or YouTube. Online on DAB Digital Radio and on 1395 AM. Talking Adelaide. This is Adelaide's 5AA. Sunny and 22 with the 7 o'clock news. I'm Kendall Brantig. Keep your body in shape with Physio Extra Clinical Pilates and group exercise classes. PhysioExtra.com. Several gunshots were fired into a fence at Salisbury Downs last night. It happened on Spain's Road just before 10. Senior Constable Jane Cullinan says luckily no one was injured. A witness reported seeing a small dark coloured hatchback leaving the scene and heading towards Salisbury Highway. Crime scene investigators did attend the scene last night and investigations are continuing, but the incident is not believed to be random. The damage bill from a fire at a Stirling shopping centre has soared to $25 million. Two 14-year-old boys have been charged with arson. The Shop Workers Union says it's working closely with Woolworths to ensure staff can be found alternative employment. The union's Josh Peake says with no other Woolies in the Hills town, there will be more of a commute for some. We're talking 15-minute drives to either Mount Barker or to Arkabar. There's Marriottville. Blackwood's an option as well. So there are stores within sort of a 15-kilometre radius. Doctors in Gaza are struggling to treat injured civilians caught up in the conflict with Israel. Supplies are dwindling and the situation inside hospitals is being described as dire. The World Health Organization's Dr Margaret Harris says aid is available but the trucks carrying it are unable to get through. You can't send the trucks in at the risk of being bombed and it's got to be understood this is purely for women and children. When we look at who's been killed, mm. 40 to 60 percent of them are children. This is not about two different warring sides. This is about children being killed. The critical border crossing between Egypt and Gaza has this morning been targeted in an airstrike after some UN fuel trucks made it through. One in seven voters opted not to cast their ballot in the voice referendum. While the total number of Australians who voted won't be clear for a few weeks, the Electoral Commission believes the final figure will be in the mid-80% range. More than 150 Transport Workers Union members have walked off the job across Victoria this morning, sparking concerns the country's dairy industry will be disrupted. The workers employed by Saputo will stop work for 48 hours as they demand better pay and conditions. While farmers are asking households to swap the traditional pumpkin for a pineapple this Halloween, they're pushing the idea to help offset a season plagued by floods and the pandemic. Redrich Fruits Director Matt Palisi says the fruit is now in abundance. They've had a tough two years with, you know, the, the weather and the flowering on the fruit. So they've gone through a massive shortage and now there's an oversupply. So whether you're eating it, turn it into a jack-o'-lantern, you know, everyone needs to pop a pineapple in their su supermarket trolley. Mining magnate Clive Palmer's yacht has run aground at Singapore's upmarket Sentosa Island. The 56-metre vessel is home to luxury features including a jacuzzi, bars and a VIP suite. Paul McCartney has been keeping a low profile since arriving in Adelaide on Sunday. The former Beatle was staying at Mount Lofty House's Sequoia Lodge. But he's expected to leave the grounds today for rehearsals ahead of his concert tomorrow night at the Entertainment Centre. And Ziggy Marley will headline WOMAD next year, four years after he cancelled his performance on the eve of the event for family reasons. It'll be his first Australian performance in more than a decade. The son of reggae icon Bob Marley will join artists from 25 countries at the Botanic Park Festival in March. Now turning to 5AA Sport. There's plenty of stock ready for immediate delivery on Mitsubishi Triton from Agostino Mitsubishi, Nailsworth and Elizabeth. Here's Tom Wren. Thank you, Kendall. Let's start with Cricket Australia's World Cup campaign is alive again after a comprehensive five-wicket win against Sri Lanka in Lucknow. The Aussies were in trouble with Sri Lanka's openers both making half centuries, but after reaching none for 125, they lost 10 for 84. 
thanks largely to Adam Zampa, who took four for 47. Half centuries from Mitch Marsh and Josh Inglis then setting up the Aussies for the win. Marcus Stoinis bringing up the winning runs with a six in the 36th over. Gives himself room and belts it into the stands. Comprehensive, commanding victory from Australia. Audio there thanks to Nine. Attention now turns to Australia's next match against Pakistan on Friday night, while tonight it's South Africa up against the Netherlands. Meantime, South, Af uh, South Australia rather is in a strong position, heading into day four of its Shield clash against New South Wales at Adelaide Oval. The Redbacks will resume their second innings at 3 for 57, giving them an overall lead of 167 runs. To football and there's only around 36 hours left in the trade period with Port Adelaide still needing to orchestrate deals for Asava Radagalia, Brandon Zerk Thatcher, Ivan Soldo and Jordan Sweet. There was some movement yesterday with Fremantle offloading Lockie Schultz to Collingwood while Liam Henry heads to St Kilda. Aussie Jordan Thompson has secured one of the biggest wins of his career upsetting Alexander Zverev in the opening round of the Japan Open. And in some baseball, the Texas Rangers have taken a 1-0 series lead in their best-of-seven ALCS series against the Houston Astros. That's after winning Game 1 2-0 in Houston. And that's the 5AA Sport. Now checking 5AA traffic. Luther House, the leaders in turning your outdoor space into a great entertainment area with an opening and closing roof. Good morning, roads are working well today. Southern Expressway looking the goods. We're actually at a breakdown free in the freeway. Really good run too from Mount Barker through to Glen Osmond. Do have a lane closed at Norwood for works today. The parade near Queen Street, speeds at 40 and getting sluggish around Fullerton at the moment for the intersection upgrade of Fullerton Road and Glen Osmond Road. Cameras, Everard Avenue, Keswick and Cliff Street. Glen Gary, that's in a 50k zone too. Back by popular demand at a Porto, $15 whole flame grilled Portuguese chicken with your choice of basting. Feed the family for less. Offer ends today only at a Porto. Adelaide's most accurate traffic on 5AA. Beaumont's new showroom is now open at Seaford Meadows with 25% off all tiles this Saturday only. Sunny in 22 today, sunny again tomorrow, 26, up to 30 on Thursday and partly cloudy for Friday, 27. At the moment, 6. More news as it happens on 5AA. Breakfast on 5AA, David Penberthy and Will Goodings. Jobs, apprenticeships, traineeships and careers. Maxima can help. Learn more today at maxima.com.au. 7 after 7, good morning to you. Welcome to Tuesday. If you're joining us for the first time, you're doing so on what is a beautiful morning ahead of what is going to be a magnificent day and three really, or four even, warm consecutive days coming up before it cools down for the weekend. Coming up this hour, Phil Curry in the nation's capital after 7.30. That's going to be a fascinating chat given the uh, the referendum is now in the rearview mirror. What does it mean for the federal government? Phil will have all the analysis shortly. Uh, John Blake before 8 o'clock. But um, uh, right now what we want to do is get into some of the stories of the morning. The story about which we've received the most correspondence and texts in the last day has been the fire at Sterling. We spoke about it in the context of what it meant for those inside the Woolworths. We chatted with someone who took a video whilst the flames were literally firing into the roof of the of the Woolworths there. But it affected surrounding businesses as well. As we've been speaking about across the morning, there's questions now around what becomes of that uh, of Sterling Village, uh, and it's home to a host of wonderful businesses: Angelakis Brothers, Baker's Delight, Chibo, Green Dispensary, Sterling Variety Meats, uh, Stock Pot, and Sushi Delight. Well. Uh, Giselle Fitzner is from Sterling Variety Meats and joins us on 5AA Breakfast. Now on, gee, what must be a really, really difficult morning, Giselle. Uh, Giselle, good morning to you. Hello, how are you? Yeah, we're good, thanks, Giselle. Uh, we're not going through any of the hardship that you guys and all those other businesses we just mentioned are, though. This must have just had a, a terrible effect um, on, on your business. Oh, it, it has, yeah. I, we honestly, right now, at this very point, still have no idea what's happening mm. um yeah we don't yeah we literally have had no no news about anything so in terms of the actual physical shop is it complete your your shop is it completely unusable we do, honestly we have no idea we've not been allowed in yet and we've had no communication in regards to anything some people have um some of the fireys have said it looks like your shop's okay but they, because they don't know what a butcher shop looks like at the <laughs> the rear, yeah. um, they, they sort of don't know whether it is okay or not. 
So in terms of like, I mean, you have thousands and thousands of dollars worth of stock there, I'd imagine, like beef that's ageing and, you know, frozen oh, produce, all sorts of stuff. Oh, yeah, yeah, it, it is. And right now we haven't even been able to get in to, to see it. it yeah. would, it's not going to be pleasant getting in there. No. Do are you do you know, Giselle, even from your chats with the firefighters and people uh, that have been working on the scene, whether if the shop escaped immediate fire damage, whether you're actually out of the woods or whether there still might be concerns about, I know there's some worries about the roof of the building, the integrity of the rest of the structure. Like if you're, yeah. if it's not burnt out, is it all okay or is there still question marks about whether you'll be able to reopen? Well, see, that's what we don't know. That's right. actually what we don't know. We don't know um, what they are thinking about with, in regards to salvaging those shops. Um, as a, as us as business owners, we sort of almost without Woolworths there, and is our is our business worth? You know, we've got lots of questions. You know, because mm. without Woolworths there, is our is how viable is our business to continue? Yeah. Um, so they're all questions we still haven't. You know, they're all sort of questions that are left in limbo for us. But without sort of knowing what the plans are for the building we then can't make the next step i guess the other thing that's really confusing giselle because there's so many different scenarios talking to you about you know whether whether the business could restart but as you say without all the foot traffic and regulars that you'd get coming over from woolworths to buy proper meat from from a butcher yeah, shop so right. yeah does that mean you, you're not even really in a position to talk about it with your insurers yet either are you no, we've we've basically with the insurance and the assessors at this point, we've just been running through scenarios of what could happen, mm. um, and and we've just had to run with with that, um, oh like you know, different thoughts of what what our future could look like. So yeah. literally at this point, we do not know. How many people do you employ, Giselle? Um, we employ ten. I. Wow. Had a look last night. It's a yeah, lot of families, yeah. Isn't it? So then, well, it is. Yeah, and these are these are families too. That you know, we've got staff that have done their apprenticeships with us and stayed with us and have now had families. And so you know, we've got long-standing employees that you know we class as our own family as mm. well. Yeah. Um. So it's 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 really hard because we don't really know um what we can say to them because we don't really know ourselves. Yeah, yeah. How long have you had the business, Giselle? Next year will be twenty years. Wow, oh, so wow. a long time. And you it had, is, you, yeah, you, it was gone through COVID, and you probably thought COVID yeah. was the worst thing you were going to see. Well, I guess in a way, no. though, this is this is much worse than COVID because I suppose with COVID, you could you're you're an essential service. You could still trade, and everyone was home. I, yeah, I mean, I, I know a lot of people running food businesses. You said COVID was actually a, a bonanza because everyone was home yeah, eating good food. Yeah. Yeah, and we had a lot of rest, the restaurants and cafes because they were closed. That impacted us in a good way too. So, yeah. but then we've had we've had two um, blackouts in the last. Um, well, I'd, we had one last year. Um, you know, with the big storms that came through, yeah. we we lost power to the complex, so we lost all our stock then. And then the big SA blackouts, we lost stock then. Um, yeah. So yeah, it's been, it's been a tough sort of. Five years, I guess, or so, yeah. Yeah, I'll say. Is there any time frame, Giselle, around what they've said, you know, by the end of the week, you'll, you, we'll be able to give you a clearer picture, or by the end of, you know, business today, or is there any time frame yeah. they've given you to work with? Um, n no. Uh, my husband is on his way up there this morning. He should hopefully have access to look into the shop so we can at least see what we're dealing with. Um, the Our assessors are going through this morning just to sort of, weigh up the scenarios of what our might might be could look like. Um, yeah, but literally we are still up in limbo. We have no idea about anything right now, which is 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 a bit frustrating. Yeah, okay. yeah. Well, Giselle, look, in the middle of all this, we, we really appreciate appreciate you talking to us. If there's anything we can do to help, or our listeners can do to help. Well, if when you when you reopen or you decide what you're going to do or how you're going to try it, give us a call, Giselle, because we'll tell everyone. Yeah, we to will. Get in and yeah, we you guys. will. That would be awesome. Thank you so much. No, no not no at all. Problem, Giselle uh, Fitzner. Good luck, Giselle, who uh, runs Sterling Variety Meats. That's a Fitzner. It's my mum's maiden name. You must be. You could be related. We in probably a, are. In a roundabout way. We would be. Not not too many Fitzners. Good. Uh, 
good German stock, the Fitzners. Good butchers as well. So that's 10, presumably 10 shop. independent families yeah. of people going, don't know where the paycheck's coming from at the moment. It's just terrible, isn't it? Because of a couple of idiots with light and fires. Those kids, they've got a hell of a lot of explaining to do. 15 after 7, we'll jump back into some of the news of the morning in just a moment. We'll also talk sport. But first, let's check traffic thanks to Keyser. Tired of back pain? Time to try Keyser, K-I-E-S-E-R dot com dot au. Thanks, Will. Roads are working really well this morning. The freeway's looking the goods from Mount Barker all the way through to Glen Osmond. Southern Expressway, accident and breakdown free. Starting to build Port Road at Hindmarsh and we are slow South Road at Feberton. Cameras this morning to look out for. Angerston Road, Angerston, Bowker Street, Warradale. And you find another one this morning, Doors Road at Ascot Park. Dakin's Alira X air conditioner saves on your energy bill while keeping your home pure and cool. Experience the summer difference with Dakin Alira X. Dakin, perfecting the air. Adelaide's most accurate traffic on 5AA. 5AA Mornings with Matthew Pantelis. One Nation MP Sarah Gain is planning legislation on the back of the result of the referendum to repeal the state voice to Parliament. The government saying Buckley's chance of that happening. Sarah Game is on the line. One's got to ask, is that the best use of money? And I would say no. Weekday mornings from nine. And I'm committed to doing that. On 1395 Adelaide's 5AA. Hi, I'm Lynn Andrews. For over 50 years, we, the Lynn Andrews team, have specialised in commercial and residential property management. But above all, we specialise in people, helping to make life easier for investors and tenants. Everyone is treated with empathy and respect. It's the way we do business. It's the Lynn Andrews way. For residential and commercial property management, we're here to help you. Visit lynnandrews.com.au Before it's with the chef, before it's on your plate, before it's on your lips, that sensational cut of beef, lamb, pork or poultry was in the hands of a great butcher. My Butcher, feeding 250,000 South Australians every week. The pleasure's all theirs and luckily they're all ours. 100% locally owned and operated since 1999. My Butcher, meat with care. Over 60,000 Adelaide homes have said yes to saving money on their energy bills with YES, your energy saving solutions. What's keeping you? Did you know that you might be eligible for a rebate on a new appliance like a dryer or fridge? You might even qualify for a purchase you've already made. Just visit the YES website for a list of appliances and the size of the cash back available. For T's and C's on this unbeatable offer from your energy saving solutions, go to yes.net.au. That's yes.net.au. It's easy to get behind the wheel of a new Mawson Lakes Volkswagen right now. In fact, it's ridiculously easy. All you need to do is head to the showroom on Salisbury Highway, check out the range of new and demo Volkswagens on sale now, and then pick your favourite. How easy is that? All stock is ready for immediate delivery, with easy finance options available. And remember our next day servicing. Mawson Lakes Volkswagen, Salisbury Highway, just a short drive from the city. Rosanna Mangiarelli here from 7 News. Join me and Will Goodings for Adelaide's leading news hour, 7 News, tonight at 6 o'clock. Breakfast on 5AA, David Penberthy and Will Goodings. Know someone finishing school and looking for an apprenticeship or a traineeship? Visit maxima.com.au. And after 7 Sport in a moment, Phil Curry in the nation's capital after 7.30 today. And we're going to put something to the trial by jury before 8 o'clock. John Blake as well. But first, Jack Aranda Watch has started in South Australia. We are lucky enough to be joined by 5 to Blaze own gardening guru, Michael Keelan. Michael, good morning to you. Good morning, Will. Good morning, Dave. It's a beautiful time of year, Michael. Jack Aranda time. Do they jump around Dave, a bit? Yeah, it, it, it's a little bit early, I reckon. But, um, I mean, you where you live in that area there is... Uh, Jack around heaven almost, isn't it? Oh, yeah, around Waville Goodwood, there's a stack of those beautiful old Jack Arandas. It's one of the... You actually, we see people in our street who... Um, I actually think sometimes they've actually been tourists from overseas who come and take photos of them when they're all in bloom. Well, they are. They're, they're one tree that's... Uh, it's an imported tree into Australia and, and to many other countries around the world that's really almost people think they're native to their own country because they're so prolific. Yeah. And all of a sudden, and David, you would know this, living in the area, 
there's there's nothing there, and then all of a sudden there's this purple sort of rays that yeah. just spreads over the area where they're planted. It's something pretty special. They look spectacular. How long do they usually stay in bloom for? Uh, it depends a bit on the weather. If we get you know a storm coming through or something like that, they tend to uh, drop their, their uh, foliage and uh, sorry their leaves, uh, sorry flowers. But the thing about it is, it's generally a good month or six weeks, which I mean, some of the streets around Adelaide are, are just transformed. They're, they're beautiful. The, um, they're from Brazil originally, aren't they, Michael? They are, yeah, Brazil and uh, Bolivia around that area. And, and, Dave, I know you lived in Mexico City for a while. You'd see them over there, I would imagine. Yeah, well, there's a really famous house in Mexico City by a very important architect called Luis Barragan, who... Um, he invented the floating staircase, Louis Barragan. Okay. But there's there's a famous house in Mexico City called the Pink House, and it's got this giant, massive pink outside wall, and planted in front of it is one jacaranda. And there's this uh-huh. famous photo of this jacaranda in bloom against this pink concrete wall. It's one of the best wow. pieces of design you've ever seen. They're great. Yeah, you think in a way, uh, you know, that ad the tourism people have just done where, when after you watch it, you don't know where you are, but... If they'd thrown a few jacarandas around the place, and uh, and good news is they've planted some by the festival theatre. I mean, tourists actually travel to see jacarandas. It's quite staggering. Yeah, isn't there a town? Is it Grafton in New South Wales has an annual jacaranda festival? Yes, you're right. Grafton does, and uh, uh, Buenos Aires they have their uh, Vinda Santa Fe. They people travel from around the world to go to these places where there are jacarandas for sort of six weeks of the year. I mean, it's quite, it's quite a, a magnetic thing to think a plant can actually do that. And mm. they are easy to grow. They love our climate. Even though they're semi-tropical, they seem to thrive everywhere. And, in fact, in Africa, I uh, sort of found out that they're trying to stop people planting them because there's just so many. Yeah, they, they go berserk. They do love, they love our, our climate. Hey, uh, great stuff, yeah. Michael. Um, Michael Terrific, Dave and Will. Love your show. You too, mate. Love yours. Get on the okay, gardening you. tips How's every tomatoes, Saturday. David? How's I, your tomatoes, David? I've got a bit of a rat problem again. I've got to go to Ooh. war with the rats again. They've taken <laughs> up. There's a colony <laughs> of them somewhere. Rotten damn things. I thought we only had the uh, Burnside rat with the gold tooth, but, <laughs> gee, they must be everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> That's right, mate. Oh, uh, well... <laughs> We'll keep fighting. Good on you, mate. Thank you, Michael. Take care. Michael Keelan, host of the excellent 5AA Breakfast Show on our weekends. There's a few of them down your way in Grange. Yeah, not as many, though. They probably don't like the coastal soil no. as much. They don't like the well, sand There's as obviously much. something at play, because there's just not the... They, like, yeah, they the probably one. like the clay on the plains more. Yeah, quite possibly. Uh, great text here from Tom on the Dutton's text line. Tom from Stirling saying about our good friends uh, Giselle... Fitzner and her 10 staff at Sterling Variety Meats. Tom says, by the way, this isn't just any old butcher. They are seriously good and have some of the very best meat anywhere. Mm. Lovely people. The staff, so helpful. Good on you, Tom. Good on you, Tom. And we'll make sure we'll help them get back on their feet when they reopen, however they reopen, and wherever they ultimately reopen as well. Uh, All right, let's uh, turn our attention to sport now. There's a bit going on in the sports space. $70 schnitty Monday to Wednesday at the Birkenhead Tavern, Excelsior and Lighthouse Wharf. You just know it's a Barrow Hotel. Firstly... We've got a brand new Olympic sport, and I reckon a couple of years ago, this would have excited a lot of Australians. <laughs> now, maybe not so much. Cricket will feature Cricket. as one of the six new sports of the 2028 Olympic Games in Los Angeles. We, we've speculated this might be on the cards for a while. They proposed it. It's been signed off on. So what format? 2020. Yeah, right, 2020. I'll, I'll get to some of the format in a moment. First, here is the IOC President, Thomas Park. First, it was uh, about uh, the proposal of uh, the uh, Los Angeles uh, Organising uh, Committee to uh, introduce uh, five uh, new sports. These uh, five sports are baseball, uh, softball, flag football, lacrosse uh, sixes, squash and cricket. These uh, proposals have been accepted as a package by the IOC Executive uh, Board, taking into consideration that uh, these uh, proposals and these sports are fully in line with the uh, sports culture of our host in 28, with the American sports culture, 
They will showcase uh, iconic American sports to the world while bringing at the same time international sports uh, to uh, the United States. So as so I was saying, this has, been, this has been mooted for a while, but yesterday it was made official by the IOC, um, and they did so um, in, in Mumbai. They had a session in Mumbai whilst the World Cup was going on in the background. Um, the format is fascinating. The Chiefs in Los Angeles proposed a six-team event in both men's and women's, now, because they're the host nation, the U.S. has to be one of the six teams. <laughs> There'll be a... Um, uh, tw so it'll be 2020 format. How do you qualify? That hasn't been decided yet. But if you well, think... It'll be on world rankings, maybe. Well, I wonder... How, where Are we 100% making it? You'd think so. Hmm. Imagine if they oh, use the I'm... outcome of the World Cup right now, the top five nations. So there's five but nations. If it's T20, that come wouldn't they have to do like, like, and like? Like, wouldn't it be based on the oh, international? Who T20? knows? They can do whatever the hell they want. Well, wait, wasn't there an international T20 tournament about a year ago, six months ago? Yeah, there was. Is there another one before the Olympics? Is it an annual? Well, there have or to is be it a four yearly thing. It's, this is 2028, so we've got another. Oh yeah, okay. So for another five years, so well, maybe that, that tournament will be used ultimately. You know what I reckon is more exciting from that announcement that softball is coming back. That's great news. Heaps of women uh, will be thrilled with that news because South, South Australia, we had a whole stack of girls at Marion High who ended up ended up playing uh, state softball. Really good little softball community where I grew up. And, um, you know, because from memory, softball was a sport at the Sydney Olympics because Chelsea Clinton came out to a game. Bill Clinton's I remember it was daughter. definitely a sport then. Yeah, and, I remember Mad that. and Madeleine Albright, the former Secretary of State, she was there with Chelsea Clinton watching, Austra I think it was Australia playing the US at um, what's now the GWS home ground. That, that, was, that was where they played the softball, the Sydney Olympics, in Bankstown. The Blacktown. men's 2020 world rankings right now, according to the ICC website, um, India won. England 2, New Zealand 3, Pakistan 4, Australia 5. So we sneak in. Right now, we'd be the last team to qualify if you went on rankings just ahead of South Africa, the Windies, and Sri Lanka. All, n none of whom would make a World Cup in cricket. Uh, sorry, an Olympic cricket game. Six seems like unders. You know, you should have yeah, probably, you know... Like, like they did with the soccer, a dozen sides at least. Mm. Uh, last night in the sports show, uh, Treaders and Rowie talked about the Crows off-season, whether it was successful or not. You look at what Adelaide's business has done, and, and I don't mind what they're doing. I know people want to say, yeah, we want to get a name in, but oh, I think what's worked really well is you've gone to the draft and you've picked off some players who wanted to come home, albeit Skipper and um, Rankin, and it's gone mm. really well. You're not going to get that every year, and I know they're mm. trying to with Petty, but... I think that one's a progression. That's a 12 months knock the door again, and then go two years if it works that way. Yeah, but cool. if you look at what Adelaide's got, they get the do they pick compensation, which we all think is you'd take that if you're a yeah, Crows fan. Yep. You, you would pick grab that and run down the street and turn yeah. your phone off so they couldn't get it back, right? 100%. McAdam goes, if a second round future pick is on the table, I'd take that. I think at my smell on it is Adelaide will take that, but they're trying to not give their hand up to say, we still want Petty. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So they're not going, yeah, we'll take that. Because then that, they, if they did that deal, Melbourne might go away. But until that deal happens, they're going to use every opportunity to try and keep that door ajar with Petty. Yeah. But if the Crows walk away with do they pick compensation, all their previous picks, and then another second rounder, and then they get some defensive backup for Burgess because they lost do they, that's a tick. Because they go to the Serious? draft again. Two days remaining. in the Well, no, there's less than two. Well, two, if you count today as a full day, uh, today and tomorrow just remaining. Uh, in the trade period. And Rowie and uh, Timmy G will have all the best analysis on it with the aid of Treaders and all their host of excellent regulars on the sports show. $17 Schnitty Monday to Wednesday. The Birkenhead Tavern, Excelsior and Lighthouse Wharf. You just know it's a Baroque hotel. Is your bloated belly making you feel fat and miserable? Introducing new Caruso's Bloaties. Caruso's Bloaties contains peppermint and ginger, which are traditionally used in Western herbal medicine to relieve belly bloating, plus digestive enzymes to help your body digest lactose and fat. So if you're fed up with your bloated belly making you feel fat and miserable, try Caruso's Bloaties today. Caruso's Bloaties is available from leading pharmacies and health stores. Always read the label and follow the directions for use. So, you want to do your bit for the planet? Drink Flurio Milk Company Milk. Now available in a glass bottle, no plastic, no waste. 
Flurio Milk Company have partnered with the Utter Way to bring you milk in a glass bottle. Look for milk refill stations in your supermarket, purchase your own glass bottle, fill it, take it home, drink it and bring it back to use again. No plastic, no waste. Visit fluriomilkco.com.au for locations. Get into Ranella Mazda for a huge range of BT50s. New or demo or reduced, in stock ready for immediate delivery. With $2,000 of genuine Mazda accessories with every new BT50 sold. Hurry, only at Ranella Mazda, Main South Road, Ranella. LVD 152780. 5AA Breakfast is streaming live right now. To watch, simply head to 5AA on Facebook or YouTube. This is Adelaide's 5AA. Sunny and 22 with the 7.30 News. I'm Kendall Brantig. Hydrotherapy at Physio Extra Marion has individual sessions and classes claimable on private health and NDIS. Police are looking for a dark-coloured hatchback after a drive-by shooting at Salisbury Downs last night. Senior Constable Jen Cullinan says shots were fired into a fence on Spains Road. Witnesses heard multiple gunshots and when police arrived they discovered three shots had been fired hitting a fence. Now the occupants of that address weren't injured. The incident is not believed to be random. And police are investigating a suspicious car fire at Broadview. They were called to Tarakan Avenue around 4.20 after reports a Holden Commodore was alight in a driveway. Fire crews extinguished the blaze, which caused extensive damage to the vehicle. And investigations are continuing into Sunday's inferno at the Stirling Village Shopping Centre. The damage bills climbed to $25 million and two teenage boys have been charged with arson. While staff from the gutted Woolworths could go and work for the competitor, the shop workers' union's Josh Peake says the other major supermarket in town will need more manpower, so it makes sense. We've also reached out to Romeo's Foodland, the other major store with, uh, within the town that's obviously going to be the sole provider of groceries for that community for some time. So they're probably going to be in the need of some additional staff, we think would make sense, particularly for the casuals who are working at Woolworths to see if they've got an opportunity to move across pretty quickly. The World Health Organisation says there's less than 24 hours of water, electricity and fuel left in the Gaza Strip before a real catastrophe sets in. It's been over nine days since Israel launched its bombardment in retaliation to an unprecedented attack from Hamas. Since then, over 2,800 Palestinians have been killed. The organisation's Director-General Tedros Adnan Ghebreyesos says the worst is yet to come. It is an awful reminder of how quickly the health of millions of people can be put at risk. War will bring nothing. Innocent civilians and children are paying the price. Rare cancers are on the rise as scientists discover more genetic subtypes and mutations. A new report shows of the 165,000 cancer diagnoses in the last year, more than a quarter were considered rare. Monash University professor John Zogsberg says oncologists want the government to consider genetic testing for all patients to improve treatment outcomes. The rare and less common cancers are becoming more prevalent and unfortunately they're associated with a higher proportion of deaths partly because we don't know a lot about them and partly because there are fewer treatments developed for those patients with rarer and less common cancers. Australia will lead the first ever world phone amnesty, which aims to raise awareness of the amount of mobile phones ending up in landfill. Research shows keeping a smartphone in use for an extra two years can reduce its carbon dioxide effect by 43%. Kingfisher co-founder and chief executive Georgianne Regal says everyone should hang on to their phones for a couple of years longer. Telcos all around the world have strong trade-in programs that they have launched. Unfortunately, most consumers today are still not trading in their phones when they get a new one, but rather the phones are ending up in drawers and landfills, unfortunately. Now turning to 5AA Sport. There's plenty of stock ready for immediate delivery on Mitsubishi Triton from Agostino Mitsubishi, Nailsworth and Elizabeth. Here's Tom Wren. Thank you, Kendall. Only two days left in the AFL trade period and Port Adelaide still needs to get deals done on several players, including Asava Radagalia, Brennan Zerk Thatcher and Jordan Sweet. Meantime, Gold Coast forward Ben King is set to receive a 30% pay increase, putting him over a million dollars a year. The 23-year-old is one of the game's elite athletes and says his future remains with the Suns. Contract negotiations start next month. 
One game at the Cricket World Cup last night and Australia finally got a win on the board. Their first for the tournament. They had a five-wicket victory against Sri Lanka, Sri Lanka rather, in Lucknow. Well, there'll be a few changes to the Socceroos lineup for tomorrow's friendly against New Zealand in London after last week's loss to England. Coach Graham Arnold says it's becoming a lot more difficult to pick his starting side due to the depth of talent. You'll see some changes for this game, not wholesale changes. It's my last chance to have a look at some of the players that I've brought in over time. The thing is now I'm getting headaches now in selecting a team where probably for three or four years I didn't have that. The Socceroos begin their World Cup qualification campaign next month. Meantime, it's full-time in Euro qualifier action this morning. Ireland, four new winners against Gibraltar. The Netherlands enjoyed a one nil win against Greece. Cristiano Ronaldo bagged a double as Portugal smashed Bosnia-Herzegovina 5-0, while Slovakia beat Luxembourg 1-0. To tennis, Aussie Jordan Thompson's on the verge of breaking back into the world's top 50 after an impressive straight sets win against Alexander Zverev at the Japan Open and he says it was a great result. I don't need to say what he's done in his career. I obviously haven't done anywhere near as much as he has but when I get on the court with these guys I've got to believe that I can win and if you don't believe it you may as well not be out here so um, you know, I just really enjoy playing, uh, enjoy the challenge. But Alexander Vukic and Max Purcell as well as Chris O'Connell all lost their matches. And that's the 5 A Sport. Now to the traffic. Luther House, the leaders in turning your outdoor space into a great entertainment area with an opening and closing roof. G'day there, roads are looking really good for the run in today. Freeway is hassle-free from Stirling through to Glen Osman. Southern Expressway running well, starting to get busy south road at Thurberton. It is slow. Main North Road at Enfield and Derva Lane closed this morning at Norwood. The parade near Queen Street with speeds at 40. A few cameras around today, you'll find them Horrocks Highway, Roseworthy, and Springbank Road at Clapham. Don't melt in traffic this summer. Get your car serviced at Ultratune and their expert technicians will ensure your car's air conditioning is running smoothly. Call the search Ultratune today. Adelaide's most accurate traffic on 5AA. Beaumont's new showroom is now open at Seaford Meadows with 25% off all tiles this Saturday only. Sunny and 22 today, sunny again tomorrow, 26, up to 30 on Thursday and then partly cloudy for Friday, 27. At the moment, 8. More news as it happens on 5AA. Breakfast on 5AA, David Penberthy and Will Goodings. Know someone finishing school and looking for an apprenticeship or a traineeship? Visit maxima.com.au. 23 to 8, Phil Curry in a moment. Our jury trial is coming up very shortly. John Blake before 8 o'clock. 8223 0000. So then you can text us too on the Dutton's text line. Uh, also coming up today, looking forward to this, Lucy's review of the Italian job. Oh, yes. Voted on passionately by listeners yesterday. That will be happening just before 8.30 today. But let's head to uh, Canberra first. Phil Curry in the nation's capital joins us. Morning to you, Phil. Good morning, fellas. It was a pretty crestfallen looking Anthony Albanese on Saturday night, Phil. Um, after the result, I've got to say, we saw the freight train coming here um, and it felt like whenever the PM came to Adelaide and uh, you know his, his people would seek us out and say, oh, the Prime Minister would like to come on the show to talk about The Voice, you could hear people in the outer suburbs who listen to our program going, can he talk about anything else? <laughs> Yeah, look, I, I, the, the real surprise on the night, I must say, um, on both sides, I think yesterday and eight counts was South Australia. Um, I was speaking to Jacinda Price yesterday, bumped into her, and she, not even they expected it to be that negative. So, And the Yes campaign was saying the same thing. Everyone thought WA and Queensland would be the, the outliers. And oh, I thought, you know, the Prime Minister was going to Adelaide so much, it must be close there, you know. But, um, so, you know, whatever you guys have done. Um, <laughs> it was a. It was a pretty pretty strong... I think you were second after Queensland in terms of no vote. So, uh, but it was almost like the more they campaigned here, the mm. more they put people mm. off it. Yeah, that's interesting. Yeah, I, mean, it was, yeah, I, I think, Dave, you know, like when, when you're like a, we were a month out or whatever and, um, you know, the Yes camp, you know, with the polls were showing there's still a fair amount of undecided voters, you know, around 15 to 25%, depending on what the poll. And the view was that they could push most of those to the Yes camp, but I think what happened... As, as demonstrated in South Australia, as, as, as time wore on, the undecided drifted overwhelmingly towards no, and uh, and that's why it blew out to I think it was sixty one thirty nine. And as of latest count last night, you know everyone was thinking it'd come back into a bet. No one ever thought the yes would win, but you know we sort of thought it'd be about fifty five forty five. 
with with the with the voice down out of the way, Phil. Hmm. What's the sort of order of priorities for Anthony Albanese and the government to sort of try and restore a sense that you know this is oh. a government that's focused on the big issues here in in, in Australia? What do they do yeah, first? Look, 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 straight back to that, uh, Will. You know, last night you know, there was a uh, at six thirty last night they had a meeting of the national cabinet and signed off on some skills agreement. You know, not super sexy, but it's about you know more TAFE places and more funding for the states to you know, for apprenticeships and this sort of stuff. So we're straight. Straight back to business. I think they're going to release the migration review this week. That has a lot of concerns about you know migration levels and stuff. So it's you know the voice will certainly never spoken of again. It's straight back to cost of living and stuff that you know people are worried about. And also sort of managing you know our response and our reaction to what's happening in Israel and Gaza. That's a pretty big story. It's going to get bigger. Trying to get Australians out of there and you know and manage the domestic implications of that. So it's just. Yeah, back to work, essentially. Do you think that the the way this all played out, Phil, has done enduring damage to the Prime Minister? I mean, I look at a seat like Spence in Adelaide's mm. northern suburb. Mm. So this is like Salisbury, Paraka, Elizabeth. The no vote there in a seat that has only ever been held by the Labor Party was 72%. Is there a yeah. danger that traditional Labor voters who looked at this and went, Nup, he's not talking to me, he's not talking to me about the cost of living... Could some of those people drift to the libs? Uh, look, it's, it's early, too early to tell, Dave. I think that's the big question. Both sides are asking, what is this, will these results translate into sort of electoral sentiment? I don't think it'll be a huge amount. I mean, I, I, I added up, there's, Labor has 78 seats, just 19 voted yes, right? So, and another one, then Tassie looks like it's going to go no. So you're looking at, you know, 60 seats, 60 Labor seats, you know, said no. That, that, that's a lot. And there's a lot of really safe seats, like you said, Spencer's. Seats in Melbourne you now, which have twenty percent labour margins, you can't imagine them ever voting Liberal. But I think what it does do is it sort of diminishes the PM's authority. You know, that sort of magic touch you like to think he had um, has, has definitely gone. You know, and uh, and he's going to have to be a little bit humble, I think, going forward. And you know, people will uh, question his judgment for sure. And there's a, a bit of that in the caucus, but. You know, probably by Christmas, we'll be talking about how much stuff costs again and, you know, things like that. And I think people will move on. But certainly, you know, the magic touch isn't there anymore and he's got to accept, um, you know, he, he wasn't able to convince, you know, uh, many millions of his own voters uh, to his call. So there's a reality check there for sure. And I think going forward, you know, in terms of more progressive policy ideas, that want to sort of be a bit cautious. The flip side of that equation is, is did Peter Dutton gain anything from the vote, either <coughs> Personally, or or for the movement, well, or was it more more just into Price and Warren Mundine that's that, that that led things? I think the same applies. Will you know what does it mean for Dutton in terms of he, he certainly gained in terms of his leadership is now rock solid. You know, you can imagine if mm. they'd lost if you've, if the no voted uh, lost, then you know, there'd, there'd be a lot of calls for Dutton's head. Um, so he's had a sort of a bit of a run lately. You know, Josh Frydenberg's decided not to recontest, so that removes the only real sort of rival Dutton had uh, you know, out there. And, and then he's had, a, you know, 60% of the country's back his position on the voice. So, you know, you take that any day. Um, you know, and we saw what happened in New Zealand on the weekend. The Labor Party got absolutely wiped out over there on, on the same night. So, you know, sort of, he, he's on a bit of a roll, but, you know, he's still got a long way to go before he's prime, before he become Prime Minister. But, uh, you know, you, you, you'd rather be him than Albanese on Saturday night, I think probably you can safely say that. Hmm. Great analysis, as always, Phil. Phil Curie, the National Political Editor for the Australian Financial Review. Cheers, mate. There you go. I just feel, I actually think right now, that's the first time today on the show that you and I have mentioned mm. the voice. And what is it? Quarter to eight. <laughs> I think people are just so over it. Like, it's, 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 it's so yesterday's Which news I think now. That, that'll it? be a trap for the opposition then. Because they want to, as an enduring victory, they want to refer to it repeatedly, and you know, as a failure of the of the Labor government. Oh, and for sure. <laughs> but but next week is next next Wednesday. Does anyone want to hear about it? No. Well, I don't think so. I, I don't think Alan wants to hear about it. No, he certainly doesn't want to hear about it. <laughs> uh, all right, we're to check traffic and come back with the jury in just a moment. Thanks to Keyser. You tired of back pain? Time to try Keyser. K i e s e r dot com today. You. 
Thanks, Will. The roads are looking the goods for the drive-in today. The freeway working well from Crayford all the way through to Glen Osborne. Southern Expressway is acting at a breakdown free. We're starting to get busy. Grand Junction Road at Regency Park. And we are slow at the moment. Brighton Road at Glenelg East. Cameras to look out for this morning. Everard Avenue, Keswick and Grenelg Road at Nooriutpa. Don't melt in traffic this summer. Get your car serviced at UltraTune and their expert technicians will ensure your car's air conditioning is running smoothly. Call the search UltraTune today. Adelaide's most accurate traffic on 5AA. Need a forklift? Don't just get a forklift, get a Toyota forklift. Toyota is the world's number one forklift brand with a great range of pallet jacks, walkie stackers and reach forklifts right up to their leading Toyota counterbalance forklifts. Legendary reliability and safety with cleaner, greener electric options, Toyota can tailor the right forklift solution for you. It's all part of the Toyota forklift advantage. For more, visit toyotamaterialhandling.com.au. Get a Toyota. The sun is shining, so it's the perfect time to farewell hefty electricity bills and welcome a brighter future with NRG Solar. Unlock the power of the sun with cutting-edge solar battery technology that's backed by a rock-solid 10-year warranty, saves you thousands, and empowers you to control your energy usage like never before with a simple-to-use app. This summer, add value to your home and say goodbye to blackouts. Don't wait. Visit nrgsolar.com.au. That's nrgsolar.com.au. Now, in 1842, a man started a farm in Loberthal. I got to see the, the fruits of his labours yesterday. It was remarkable because today his great-great-grandson, Tony, and his wonderful team at Kidman Park, they feed over 250,000 South Australians a week as the head of My Butcher. My Butcher is a leading meat wholesale supplier, focusing on supplying great local meat brands like 36 Degrees South Beef from Coonawarra, which won a gold at the World Steak Challenge, and Mayura Station from the Limestone Coast, Australia's most awarded full-blooded Wagyu beef. I'd say my mouth was watering going through this factory yesterday. Absolutely unbelievable. Sounds amazing. And the great thing about Tony and the team is the thing that they're most passionate about, I mean, they're passionate about great quality produce, but they are particularly passionate about great quality South Australian produce. They also supply selected food lands under the My Butcher brand, specialising in schnitzels. It doesn't get more South Aussie than that. And neither do they because they've been 100% locally owned and operated since 1999. For stockists of My Butcher products, visit mybutcher.com.au. My Butcher, meat with care. When it comes to blinds and curtains, always start with the three Bs. Bob Burns Blinds. They've been manufacturing blinds in Adelaide for over 60 years using the very best materials. With a keen eye for detail, innovation and style, from interior and exterior blinds to stunning shutters and curtains, including motorisation and security products, always start with the three Bs. Bob Burns Blinds. Visit the new showroom at 1239 South Road St Mary's or jump online at bobburnsblinds.com.au. If you need to fix your pipes, call precise. Call precise. If your toilets blowing up, call precise. Call precise. If your lights aren't turning on, or your hot water is gone, <gasps> or a plumber or an electrician, call precise. Precise. Precise plumbing and electrical. Call 1300 700 200. That's 1300 700 200. For fixed price services, call precise. Or a plumber or an electrician, call precise. Call precise. 5AA Breakfast is streaming live right now. To watch, simply head to 5AA on Facebook or YouTube. Breakfast on 5AA, David Penberthy and Will Goodings. Jobs, apprenticeships, traineeships and careers. Maxima can help. Learn more today at maxima.com.au. In the criminal justice system, all defendants are innocent until proven guilty, either by confession, plea bargain or trial by jury. This is one of those trials. Paul McCartney is currently up in Mount Lofty House, not too far from us here in Adelaide, ahead of tomorrow night's concert at the Entertainment Centre. He's been the subject of a good debate we had in the first hour of the program that we want to put to a jury trial right now. Get some science behind it. Is Paul McCartney the greatest living songwriter in the world? Are we right now host the greatest living songwriter in the world? Fact or fiction? Eight double two three double O double O. Get calling now. Eight double two three double O double O. Fact or fiction? Paul McCartney, the greatest living songwriter in the world. We're going to put that to the jury trial. Peter in Athol Park wants to talk about Paul McCartney. Actually, morning to you, Peter. Yeah, good morning, guys. Uh, just quickly, too, look at us um, with the greatest songwriters. I don't know if anyone mentioned uh, Pete Townsend. No, we didn't actually. No, he he deserves an honourable mention. 
as well? Yeah, I think I think he's written over about eight hundred songs or something. Um, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Um, now with Paul McCartney, no, years ago I was working uh, doing some theatre work, and I was talking to a guy from England, and he worked on some Paul McCartney shows in England, and he told me back then that because Paul McCartney, as you know, is a strict vegetarian, um, that um, no meat products are allowed to be sold at his concerts. At the um, concerts. I'm not, Oh, I'm not sure. I'm not sure if that's still valid. I mean, this might might have been around when Linda was around, but I mean, um, yeah, he said no. He says it's not, he, 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 anyone gets gets caught selling meat products at a concert, and they're a bit at his concerts, they're in big trouble. So I'm just wondering whether you know you can get hold of Frontier Touring or something and just find out if that's still yeah. existent. Well, I mean, I would, I, would, I wouldn't think so, but you know, I'm just curious. Yeah, I reckon the people at the entertainment centre be able to tell us that. But what would you buy there that's a meat product? Like what's, what? Because well, normally you're buying a, you, you get a beer or a glass of wine. You're not really buying food at a concert, are you? It'd be more well, if you're doing chips. at a um. There might be there'd be bags of chips. But I, they're all. It'd be more if you're playing at a festival, maybe. But then yeah, it'd be different if you was playing like uh, a yeah, like a Harvest Rock. Yeah, there any got, food options in the entertainment centre? Duncan Vermgold from Africola, knocking up a giant peri peri chicken out the back. <laughs> So Paul wouldn't like that. Well, let us know. Maybe if you've got an insight, having uh, perhaps catered to a previous visit, or indeed you're involved, you know a little bit about this one. You can What's he going to have when he goes to Star of Greece? Star. Well, there's plenty of vegetarian stuff at Star of Greece. I mean, any any restaurant, any decent world class restaurant like that, you walk in, you say, "I'm a, I'm a vegan." They go, "No worries." They have got yeah, they million can do it. Things they can do. What's a uh, what, what, is he? Maybe he's pescatarian. Does he, does he allow himself to No, I think fish? he's an animal cruelty guy. Oh. Which means that the, the Port Wollonga squid will be safe. Right. From Sir Paul. And presumably his a, party. You must have a crisis of moral, morality then when you walk into a restaurant, mustn't you? Well, that's, like, I mean, that's the theory. That, I object to eating meat, but well, it makes I'm going to go to a place where everyone's eating meat. <laughs> Whether you agree with it or not, it's philosophically consistent to say, I am not going to eat any product. If I'm, not, mm. if, I'm, if I'm a vegetarian on cruelty grounds... Mm. Then I'm 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 not going to be cruel to cows. And oh, I'm not absolutely, be yeah, yeah. Cruel to but then you go I'm anchovies. Go, but I'm going to go support a business that makes a living out of killing these things because they also probably can make other stuff tasty too. Just looking. Anyway, at the I'm not here to criticise Sir Paul's choices. I think <laughs> they'll leave him alone. I think he's an absolute legend. I don't know how we got there. I feel like you trapped me there. Um, now let's. <laughs> well, you can have the Lloyd Brothers Kalamata olives to start. This is beautiful. There's, there's plenty of choices. Like, is he vegan or vegetarian? Not sure. Oh, then he's going to say he's got the goat's curd too, but maybe yeah, not if he's a vegan. Uh, all right, let's find out whether the Paul McCartney is, in the eyes of our jury, the greatest living songwriter in the world. Is he? Do we have the greatest living songwriter in the world in Adelaide right now? Eight double two three double o double o. It's a question we are putting to our jurors. Juror number one. Good morning. Fact or good fiction? Morning. Fact. It is. He's been in the game so long. Thank you, jury number one. Jury number two, fact or fiction? Sir Paul is the greatest living songwriter uh, on earth. Uh, fiction, fiction. Bob Dylan says hello, by the way. <laughs> Thank you, jury number two. Yes. Jury number three, good morning. Good morning. Um, it is fiction because the man himself, Paul, Cart Paul McCartney, nominated Neil Finn as the greatest songwriter he'd ever heard. I like that. Really? Maybe we'll count... Paul wow. McCartney is an honorary juror this morning. Yeah. Although, Sir Paul, if you do would like to call in, 8223 0000 is the number. I'm not sure what his views on Talkback Radio are. Oh, you'd be a big fan. You reckon? Yeah. Juror number four, good morning. Yeah, good morning. Fact or fiction? Oh, no, it's a fact because uh, Leonard and McCartney, uh, they're, they're the two probably great songwriters, and on the 5AD Top 300, they had about 18 hits yeah. on mm. that card. It's hard to argue with the catalogue. Yeah. Uh, Jury number five, good morning. Good morning. Fact or fiction? I think it's fact. He's just the greatest songwriter. He's a beautiful. Mm. You know, exactly. Say. say no more. Thank you, jury number five. Jury number six might have the final say. Good morning. Good morning. Yeah, I think um, 100% is an absolute legend. Um, the Beatles have sort of set the trend for everything that's come pretty much since, so, and the songwriting's done that for him. So, yeah, Thank definitely, you. Uh, definitely a fact. Thank you, jury number six. That leaves us with a verdict. Uh, that is an absolute majority a verdict. 4-2 to uh, fact. Sir Paul is the greatest living songwriter. There you go, Sir Paul. Give us a call. Uh, 822 0000. Now, let's, um, let's hear from John Blake. Thanks to Aussie Fast Transport Solutions, Interstate Freight, Distribution, Warehousing and Local Adelaide Couriers. Call Aussie Fast 13 13 Morning, Steph. 
Tom Kutzen Tonus is here to see you. Okay, send him in. Will do. You can go in. Thank you, Stephanie. Come in, Tom. Hello, Pelia Pina. Hello, Tom. Boy, oh, boy, oh, boy, oh, boy. What do you want, Tom? You must be feeling just awful. Why? Well, because, you you know, you thought you could jump on board an idea and ride its coattails to unlimited popularity by introducing the same idea and claiming it as your own before the other one had even been voted on and didn't count on it being the most unpopular idea since the King of the Vikings, Olaf the Hairy, ordered 50,000 battle helmets with the horns on the inside. <laughs> <laughs> what are you saying? Why? why that was you... from Blackadder. <laughs> Very funny. Rowan Atkinson. <laughs> yeah, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> Almost as funny as you shooting yourself in the foot and then lending Albo the gun. <laughs> have you got anything positive you want to say? or? You- yes, I have. Isn't it great that now you have a mandate to drop the SA voice to Parliament? What? Well, you can get rid of it now without losing face. You can just... Uh, I'm not getting rid of it. But the people have spoken, Premier Peter. Only a fool would go ahead with it now. You're calling me a fool? Uh, no, I'm calling you Premier Peter, Premier Peter. You only have to say it once. Say what once? Premier Peter. Oh, so just Premier Peter, Premier Peter. Yeah, but only once, just Premier Peter. Okay, just Premier Peter, Premier Peter. No, just Premier Peter. That's what I said, Premier Peter, Premier Peter. Can you stop doing routines from Blackadder? I anyway, I strongly advise you to drop the SA voice to Parliament. You're not my advisor, Tom. So you're not very good at taking advice. Goodbye. If you're not good at taking advice, <laughs> why would you listen to the voice? I liked Blackadder too. Oh, great. Here's a quote. Okay. Your brain is so small that if a hungry cannibal cracked your head open, there wouldn't be enough to cover a small water biscuit. Oh, I better go, Premier Peter. <laughs> your head is as empty as a unit. Underpants. Well, that's a bit unkind. I, I don't if I don't see you again, it'll be 20 billion years too soon. Oh, great. Yeah. Great show, Blackadder. <laughs> <laughs> Certainly was. Great show. Uh, we had a bit of an, um, uh, reporting out of Perth from Perth Now back in 2017 on the question of Sir Paul McCartney's choices when it comes to meat consumption at concerts. How about this? Site crew preparing for his show at Perth's NIB Stadium on the 2nd of December 2017 were told, told caterers will provide them with vegan food only. So not vegetarian. Vegan. Vegan food. So no eggs, no cheese, no All milk. All the crew members setting up the concert had to eat vegan as well. So this is not just people, this is not just patrons, it's crew members. Um, he reportedly demanded only vegan food be sold in the concourse at a concert in Illinois in July wow. of that year as well. So they sold vegan chili fries, vegan nacho grande and buffalo cauliflower fries, which all sound... Quite horrific. Um, <laughs> yeah. Oh, anything with nacho in it. Anything, there's no substitute for cheese. Like, absolutely. We've got a, veg, a vegan friend, and I made vegan Mexican. A lot of Mexican stuff is actually easy to turn into Mexican, but anything involving cheese, the cheese substitutes is like, Wah. How about this? He just sort of a bit of a sort of a form of meat apartheid, too. Um, when, with, among his travelling cohort, those who wanted to eat meat were confined to a designated area. <laughs> on the upper concourse after the concert yeah. started. I'll tell you what, Bob Dylan's just rocketing even, even further up my <laughs> list of great living greatest songwriters. <laughs> <laughs> uh, five AA News is coming up. Breaking eight, not too far away. It's a frightening thought, but what if you lost the capacity to manage your financial affairs? If you're not at the helm, who makes medical or health decisions? Who controls the family trust? From the simplest to the most complex wills and estate plans, Donlan Lawyers will answer your questions and help carry out your wishes. For wills and estate planning, visit DonlanLawyers.com. That's DonlanLawyers.com. Hindmarsh Square, Adelaide and Ocean Street, Victor Harbour. Speak with One Solution and they'll tell you cybercrime is not a big business problem, a government problem or a small enterprise problem. It's everyone's problem. Ransomware, malware and adware remain the number one threat. One call to one solution will put your business in a safe place. It's the smartest, most cost-effective business decision you'll ever make. Get in touch with One Solution, winner of the National Telstra Customer Experience Award. OneSolution.net.au You've decided to build? It's exciting stuff. When you've found land, it's a good idea to get advice on what you can build on your new parcel of paradise. Get Steve from Beechwood Homes to take a look. There's no obligation and you'll get a great understanding of what's possible. Sloping block, flat block, weird shaped block or block on a cliff. Speak with Steve from Beechwood Homes for all the possibilities. Life's good. It's even better in a Beechwood home.
Google Beachwood Adelaide. Over 5,500 Adelaide businesses have said yes to saving money on their energy bills with Yes, your energy saving solutions. What's keeping you? One of the easiest ways to save is by switching out your old lighting to energy efficient LEDs. An on site assessment can help to design the perfect LED lighting system for your business. And with rebates available, a full upgrade might cost as little as $33. For T's and C's on this unbeatable offer from your energy saving solutions, go to yes.net.au. That's Y E double S. So, you want to do your bit for the planet? Drink Flurio Milk Company Milk. Now available in a glass bottle, no plastic, no waste. Flurio Milk Company have partnered with The Utter Way to bring you milk in a glass bottle. Look for milk refill stations in your supermarket, purchase your own glass bottle, fill it, take it home, drink it and bring it back to use again. No plastic, no waste. Visit fluriomilkco.com.au for locations. Online, on DAB Digital Radio and on 1395 AM, Talking Adelaide. This is Adelaide's 5AA. Sunny and 22 with the 8 o'clock news, I'm Kendall Brettig. Keep your body in shape with Physio Extra Clinical Pilates and group exercise classes. PhysioExtra.com The federal government's working to evacuate at least 45 Australians out of the Palestinian territory of Gaza. The group has made contact, but getting them out of the conflict zone will be hard. Around 1,200 Australians have left Israel on special repatriation flights. Deputy Prime Minister Richard Miles says there won't be further flights for the time being, but Australian military aircraft will remain in the Middle East. We will be keeping defence assets, RAF planes in the region, uh, depending on how this obviously all develops. So there is a presence that we're going to maintain for a contingency, but there aren't any more pl uh, planned flights at this stage. A demand for a change of seat on a plane has escalated into an argument about the conflict in the Middle East. A Jetstar flight was taxiing at Sydney Airport when a man complained about a bad back. Cherie was on board the flight and says the situation then escalated. Because they were talking about the war in Palestine, it made us all very nervous. Obviously, it's unusual for the um, crew to allow passengers to leave a plane once you've all boarded. Mm. And then other passengers started saying... Um, expressing their concern, saying, well, if they're exiting, are you checking the toilets, are you checking the baggage? All passengers were evacuated from the plane and have been put on other flights. Two Swedish football fans have been shot dead outside a stadium in Brussels. Thousands of people at the game between Belgium and Sweden were told to remain in the stadium for their own safety as the gunman opened fire on the boulevard outside. Belgium has lifted its terror threat warning to its highest level. Police are investigating a shooting at Salisbury Downs last night where several shots were fired into a fence on Spain's road. No one was injured or a witness reported seeing a small dark coloured hatchback leaving the scene towards Salisbury Highway. Crime scene investigators have attended the scene. They don't believe the incident is random. And a car went up in flames at Broadview this morning. The Holton Commodore was set alight in the driveway of a home on Tarakan Avenue. Police are investigating. The number of Australians being prescribed medication for ADHD has more than doubled in five years. More than 400,000 people now take drugs for the common disorder. Doctors say the jump represents a backlog of undiagnosed cases finally being addressed. The question of why many people love eating fatty food has been tested by international researchers. Alexander Nimmo has more. A research team looked at activity in volunteers' brains while they ate a variety of foods with different levels of fat and sugar. They found part of a particular section of the brain was highly responsive to oily, smooth textures produced by fatty liquids on the surface of the mouth. They suggest future research could look into the designing of foods to seem fattier by manipulating texture and in doing Doing so trick our brains into preferring healthier but lower fat foods. And National Carers Week is shining a light on the sacrifice millions of Australians are making to look after loved ones. 2.65 million people in the country provide care to family members or friends. 15-year-old Ben Thurm is one of them, spending up to three hours a day looking after his brother. I care for my 19-year-old brother who has learning difficulties in epilepsy. I help him by helping him with his morning routine and taking him out to the, to the shops or to do activities with him. 
Sport. There's plenty of stock ready for immediate delivery on Mitsubishi Triton from Agostino Mitsubishi, Nailsworth and Elizabeth. Here's Tom Wren. Thank you, Kendall. Cricket first. Half centuries from Mitchell Marsh and Josh Inglis have helped Australia to their first win at the One Day World Cup. Adam Zampa took four wickets as the Aussies bowled Sri Lanka out for 209. Captain Pat Cummins says they never let the pressure get to them after consecutive losses to start the tournament. So it's part of being an international cricketer in the middle of a World Cup. There's a lot of people watching, which is great. So um, it's nothing new. Um, but, yeah, we, we know what we're about as a squad. And, um, yeah, outside noise doesn't bother us too much. Audio there, thanks to Fox. Meantime, the Redbacks will resume at 3 for 57 on day three of their Shield clash against New South Wales, giving them an overall lead of 167 runs. Well, there has been movement at the trade table with Lockie Schultz on his way from Fremantle to Collingwood, while Liam Henry is also leaving the Dockers for St Kilda, but there's still no deals done for Port Adelaide who want to bring in a host of players. Aussie Cam Smith has missed out on the season-ending prize for winning the Leaf Live Golf season. That award instead going to American Taylor Gooch, who won back here in Adelaide earlier this year. Gooch collects more than 28 million Aussie dollars, while Smith had to settle for second spot, but still collects almost 13 million himself. Wallabies coach Eddie Jones is set to be grilled by reporters this morning amid reports he's going to walk out on Australian rugby for Japan. The International Olympic Committee has approved the inclusion of cricket in the 2028 Games in LA. Baseball, softball, flag football, lacrosse and squash will also be added. And the baseball playoffs continue this morning and the Texas Rangers are currently 4-1 up at the end of the second inning against the Houston Astros. While later this morning the Arizona Cardinals will start their series against the Philadelphia Phillies as they fight to get to the World Series. And that's the 5AA Sport. Now to the traffic. Luther House, the leaders in turning our outdoor space into a great entertainment area with an opening and closing roof. Good morning. You should have a good run in today. The freeway working well from Crayfoos in through to Glen Osmond. Northern Connector looking the goods. It is getting busy at the Southern Expressway exiting at Tons Lane. Quite slow at the moment. Brighton Road at Glen Elg East. Do have a lane closed this morning to look out for for works at Norwood, the parade near Queen Street with cameras, Winnie for an Avenue Glen Door and West Street at Ascot Park. Did you know at Ultratune you can get a manufacturer's handbook service for your car and not void your new car statutory warranty? Call or search Ultratune today. Adelaide's most accurate traffic on 5AA. Beaumont's new showroom is now open at Seaford Meadows with 25% off all tiles this Saturday only. Sunny and 22 today, sunny again tomorrow, 26, up to 30 on Thursday and partly cloudy for Friday, 27. At the moment, 10. More news as it happens on 5AA. Breakfast on 5AA, David Penberthy and Will Goodings. Jobs, apprenticeships, traineeships and careers. Maxima can help. Learn more today at maxima.com.au. Seven after eight, good morning to you. Breaking eight coming up in just a moment. Lucy's movie review is not too far away. Still plenty of time for your calls and texts too on just about anything you like. Eight double two three double O double O. Shoot us a text on the Dutton's text line or jump on the Foodland Supermarkets Facebook and YouTube live stream. If you've seen Paul McCartney, give us a ring too. Completely. Ron McCartney watch. We've just lauded him as the greatest living songwriter. The jury made it official. Um, now, a lot of Jacaranda texts coming in. Uh, yeah, one here from Michael saying... In Broken Hill, there's a huge jacaranda tree that's only got white flowers. It's so beautiful. And uh, Belinda, one of our many interstate listeners, uh, Belinda's watching on the Foodland Facebook live stream. She says, the jacarandas in our area in Brisbane are beautiful at the moment, but the outstanding trees in our surrounding uh, streetscape are the poinsianas. Each year their blooms are a delight, but a few years ago they were particularly spectacular. Apparently the extent of their bloom is dependent on how dry winter has been. The drier the winter, the more prolific the blooms. Keep your texts coming in. Thanks to Dutton's. Three dealerships, ten franchises in the Adelaide Hills and Murray Bridge. Dutton's easy to do business with. Well, this is easily the best sports story in South Australia and Australia, if not the world right now. It's a lot of fun. Today's breaking at eight. So in Spain at the moment, the Mallorca ITF World Masters Tennis Tournament is underway. Now, this is an annual event. It's the absolute peak upper echelons event for seniors tennis in the world. It attracts about 850 players a year.
aged from 30 to 90 years old. Now, one of these players who's over there right now, and he was sitting here in the studio directly opposite Will and I only a few weeks ago when he celebrated his 100th birthday, is none other than Adelaide's own Henry Young, who turned 100 last month. So now at the grand old age of 101 month, Henry, Adelaide's own Henry Young, overnight, on debut, in his very first game, he went up head-to-head -head against a Spaniard, a gun 92-year-old by the name of Simon Camps, Henry beat him 6-2 in his first game. <laughs> now, I've seen, I've seen still photos and videos uh, of what happened on the court overnight. Being, being in Spain, they played on clay. Henry blitzed him at the start. He got away to a, a four-love lead in the set. Um, Simon regrouped, picked up a couple of games, but um, Henry beat him 6-2. It actually started raining as well during the game, but they decided to plough on anyway despite the rain, and in another highlight, while he was there, Henry was sought out by Australian doubles hero, Paul McNamee, who sat down and did an interview with him, courtside, uh, about his love of tennis. I think that I'm very competitive, and uh, tennis is one of those games where you, know, you assess the opponent's weakness and then you trade on them, so it's not really a... <laughs> a nice game in some things, but nevertheless it's the, the games that you have to fight harder are the ones that you remember and are the ones that you enjoy the most. So um, the tournament's just started, Henry's off to a flyer, 6-2, triumphant overnight against Spain's Simon Camps. Henry, your state and your nation, we salute you. <laughs> How good is that story? That's that superb. guy is an inspiration. Most people... I was going to say half his age, but significantly less than half his age, would struggle to play a game of tennis the just getting off an international flight. He only got there like four days ago. It's unbelievable. His family, they, they, they put up a picture in this um, little chat group we're, we're all in. Um, he's sitting there drinking Al Barino and eating tuppers <laughs> the other night in this uh, restaurant. He now might he's be out, out of on the court. <laughs> You know, I rang him last year to talk to him about something. It was for one of the stories that I was doing for the paper. And I got the boop, 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 boop. He's overseas and um, didn't answer. And I spoke to one of his mates here and he said, oh, he just decided he's going to go to Phuket. Oh, good on him. With his, his, his wife was, was still with yeah. us then, God bless her. Um, Madge. Him and Madge, and she was, she was 99, I think. They just jumped on a plane. How, just the two of them. How about no, the no versatility? One, no one yeah. went with them. That's amazing. To Phuket. Have you been to Phuket? Absolutely. It's pretty crazy. Yeah, it certainly is. Um, we're walking around Phuket together. Maybe you could teach this next generation of Australian tennis players something too. How about the versatility of his game? Translates to clay as well. Maybe the slower mm. surface. He might be able to play to his 115. Well, he has played before with Rafa and Nadal. Right. He's hit up with Rafa. No wonder Rafa's so good. <laughs> well, mate, you know, I've played against him. He... Yeah. If he's within cooey of the ball, you're stuffed. Yeah, and you've beaten Mark Woodford, so <laughs> you're no mug. Hey, um, this is an interesting story out of... Um, That's not technically correct. Uh, uh, <laughs> I'm going to speak it into reality. Don't worry about that. This is fake news. Now, it's a, like uh, you've starred in a Scott Hicks film. <laughs> <laughs> a I didn't mention that to Hicksy yesterday, your no, old mate. I, I mean, I think he knew. Yeah, I think he remembered. Oh, yeah. Of course, it's significant Will. scene in his... Um, He's an extraordinary <laughs> career. Didn't he play Giggly, Giggly Idiot 3? <laughs> no, that's three, one of 300. A Jetstar plane at uh, Sydney Airport bound for Melbourne has returned to the terminal due to an unruly passenger. Flight JQ501 was taxiing on the runway this morning when a passenger said they wanted to get off due to a bad back. Then, and this bit seems like a, something of a non-secretor, other passengers began shouting about the crisis in the Middle East. I don't know how those two things were related, but they both happened and the plane was turned around. Now, Cherie was on the plane and has spoken to 3AW Breakfast in Melbourne and said it was a pretty concerning incident. The staff actually handled it quite well. They, they were walking around answering everybody's questions and making sure that they were heard. And, yeah, I guess that's why the pilot decided to get everybody off because everybody was quite concerned. Mm. It was very unusual. Imagine that. Now, well, one thing you know when you hear people shouting about on a plane is Middle Eastern politics. But I, I just only can wonder how it was linked to the bad back. I mean, were people trying to give the bad back person a bit of a sense of perspective? Well, yeah, I don't know. I mean, the, the two don't normally go hand no. in hand, do they? 
You think your back's you know, bad? <laughs> don't try living in Gaza. Talking to the stuff. people at Physio Extra, people tend not to present with back pain and an obsession with Middle Eastern politics. <laughs> They're quite extraneous. No, he was phenomena. different. There was other passengers that started yelling about. Oh, so they. Oh, right. So, so they got up him about. So he was. Right, okay. He had the bad oh. back. I mean, I would defend the bad back guy. If your back seizes up, it can be total agony. You don't need a lecture about. What are they? You know, you know Middle Eastern politics while you're Hamas, in agony. Do you? No, <laughs> yeah, that's exactly. Right. Unbelievable. Yeah, you think your back hurts? How about the two-state solution? <laughs> yeah, that's right. I don't know. I, I didn't have more information about how this transpired on this flight. It makes no sense. What is it like that guy putting up the Death to Israel sign in Adelaide suburbs? Do you think people need to chill a bit, don't they? But that felt like a product of our time as that sign. That was a guy who sounds like he lives on Twitter. Because mm. the moment the, the Tizer Journo rolled in, he went, eh, maybe I should take down the Death to Israel part. Yeah. And leave up the, you know... With the rest of the sign, which was actually kind of non-offensive. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's like when you're confronted with a real other human being that says, "That's probably not." Well, a good this idea. is it, isn't it? Yeah, as opposed to just anonymously spouting bile, and then and you're confronted by a real living, breathing human. You know, yeah, actually. You know what they did to teach in schools? The algorithm behind so how social media works. And mm. just because you see a reality that mirrors what you say and how you speak, doesn't mean that's what everyone out there thinks. Yeah, yeah. Everyone's getting this warped sense of reality. Like that guy probably hasn't seen anyone say anything less. He would probably think that was a pretty moderate position to take. Death to his rags. That's all he's ever seen. Well, it kind of fits with the the mood on cyberspace, doesn't it? Exactly right. Uh, Peter has called into the program on 8223 Morning to you, Peter. Morning, How are you? Good, Good morning. thanks, Peter. Excellent. Yes, I was a driver for a former company back in 93 when it came to Adelaide to um, the Oval. Oh, oh wow. Yeah. What, you, did you pick him up off the tarmac or was it when he was already here? No, I did. I drove on the tarmac with a stretch. And um, and Linda was with him and the two children. Wow. And, yeah, so we uh, had a nice drive into the city to the Oval. Did you chat? And uh, he chatted. Really? And in fact, <laughs> he actually stopped me. He wanted me to stop a couple of times on the H, uh, HQ Hotel on the corner of North Terrace there. There was a huge sign, Welcome Paul to Adelaide, and he asked me to slow down for the lights and stop at the red. And... Uh, he got out the window and took a photo of it. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah. Did he have memories well, of the without... tour in the sixties, Peter? Big pardon? Did he did he say anything about his memories of pl coming here no. to play Centennial Hall? No, he didn't. No, he didn't. No, no. As no, far as um, it sounds like, you've probably driven a few notable people around your time, Peter. Was he on the more friendly end of the end of the spectrum than than most? Absolutely, I'd say number one. Uh, very really? friendly, and yeah, and in fact, when he got to um, North Terrace uh, up to King William Street, we stopped at the apartment house there to go around a corner, and he actually wound down the window, and uh, well, he pushed the button, <laughs> and uh, he was speaking to people on the footpath, asking people if uh, they were going to his concert. <laughs> wow! Wow! That's amazing. Did you have any other brushes with fame in the lo in your in your line of work, Peter? Uh, you know, I've had lots of uh, brushes with those, like um, Neil McPherson and. Um, uh, oh, many, many people can't remember actually. Do they tell you day. ahead of time that you who you're picking up and who you're dealing with, or is it all a bit hush hush? And they said it's just a, no, there's a VIP well, that you have to pick up. In that industry, very secretive. You've got to be very, very, very careful what you say and what you do. And uh, we get warning of what, who we're picking up and where from <laughs> we're going to. Uh, we do a reconnaissance, perhaps, if it's you know a strange place to get into. So. Um, yeah. No, you know, what, you know what's really funny, Peter? You're talking about the secrecy, secrecy surrounding that. Mm. The day you picked Paul up, or uh, around that period, I'd only just started working at the advertiser, and we had a rolling oh. around-the-clock shift, and I spent 12 hours at the airport myself. <laughs> I was sent down there with a photographer, and I spent the, the entire day, a 12-hour shift, <laughs> just sitting at the airport <laughs> in the hope that we saw you driving Sir Paul in the car, and I didn't, I didn't get the shot. So unbelievable! <laughs> your, your 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 powers of uh, concealment were excellent. <laughs> you ever get the well, call, Peter, to, to pick up a VIP, and you went there and got him, and thought, "Who in the hell is this?" Yeah, well, it was that it was that uh, dusk actually, and uh, we were on the tarmac waiting, and the Paul came off the flight, or his uh, jet, private jet, and came to him and said, "Mate, can you tell me where to close the toilet?" <laughs> No, not here. There's no toilet on the tarmac here. Sorry. <laughs> he said, what do I do? I said, I pointed to this building just on the 
syringe, <laughs> shot over there and had a uh, quick relief and <laughs> got back in the car. Oh, that's superb. <laughs> well, <laughs> what there a great you go. Story. That's pretty unique insight. Uh, thank you for that. <laughs> <laughs> Sir Thank Paul, you, having the snakes on the tarmac might have shed. <laughs> so, welcome to Australia. Try Why finding that information out on another radio station. <laughs> <laughs> I kind of hope he's not listening now, actually. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully he turned off. Went for a walk or something. Uh, thank you, Peter. Uh, appreciate that. That was excellent. Let's uh, let's check traffic. Thanks to Keezer. Are you tired of back pain? Time to try Keezer. K o e s e r dot com. That are you? Thanks, Will. Super smooth running on the roads today. The freeway's working well from Bridgewater all the way through to Glen Osman. Southern Expressway looking the good. Starting to get busy. Main North Road at Enfield slow. Brighton Road at Glenelg East do have a lane closed today. That's for works on South Road at Torrensville. Just to my Ashwin Parade and look out for a camera which is setting up right now. Dun Robin Road at Warrida. Don't melt in traffic this summer. Get your car service at Ultratune and their expert technicians will ensure your car's air conditioning is running smoothly. Call the search Ultratune today. Adelaide's most accurate traffic on 5AA. Rowie and Timmy G on the 5AA Sports Show. Treaders, there's been some unflattering results in the AFLW comp where a lot of the new clubs coming up against the established ones getting a 10-goal hiding. Is there room for perhaps doing two divisions? Rowie and Timmy G. But it'd want to be really short term. This is purely talent. Just talent? There's not enough talent going around. It is struggling as a comp. I mean, there are girls that just aren't at the level. 4 p.m. weekdays on 5AA. Speak with One Solution and they'll tell you cybercrime is not a big business problem, a government problem, or a small enterprise problem. It's everyone's problem. Ransomware, malware, and adware remain the number one threat. One call to One Solution will put your business in a safe place. It's the smartest, most cost-effective business decision you'll ever make. Get in touch with One Solution, winner of the National Telstra Customer Experience Award. OneSolution.net.au Let's see what's in the swear jar at Buy Urban Bathrooms and Kitchens. Uh, oh, here's one from Jasmine, the operations manager at Buy Urban and the driving force behind the success of all renovation projects. Jasmine swears to ensure all the trades arrive on time every time to ensure a seamless transition to your stunning by urban bathroom for a team that swears to deliver on quality and service see by urban bathrooms and kitchens adelaide's home renovation experts thinking about a solar battery don't wait connect with nrg solar and bring home a solar battery with a rock solid 10-year warranty use the energy you generate during the day to store some for later reducing reliance on energy providers and putting money back in your pocket Experience blackout protection that'll save you thousands, all at your fingertips through a user-friendly app. Embrace 24-7 solar today. Visit nrgsolar.com.au. That's nrgsolar.com.au. With help from Flurio Milk Company and the Outer Way, cafes all over Adelaide have joined the fight to reduce plastic waste. Instead of single-use plastic bottles, they've introduced the Outer Way's reusable 18-litre kegs. In the initial week, they stand to eliminate 1,500 plastic bottles. Together with other cafes, supermarkets, schools, restaurants, hotels and workplaces, millions of single-use plastic bottles will be taken out of circulation. you got to feel good about that. Visit fluriomilkco.com.au for more. I was just doing my job. I didn't think I'd get injured. The doctor said it was a routine procedure. <laughs> right. The car came out of nowhere and it smashed right into us. At DBH Lawyers, we're here to listen to your story. Our team of local South Australian lawyers will help you navigate the law and find the best way forward. We're with you. We're for you. We're DBH Lawyers. dbh.com.au Rosanna Mangiarelli here from 7 News. Join me and Will Goodings for Adelaide's leading news hour, 7 News, tonight at 6 o'clock. Breakfast on 5AA, David Penberthy and Will Goodings. Know someone finishing school and looking for an apprenticeship or a traineeship? Visit maxima.com.au. 23 after 8, we're going to speak to a small business that's under siege after 8.30 this morning. Stick around for that. Right now, it's time to talk movies. Hello, 
live on the wireless or indeed via the Foodland Supermarkets Facebook and YouTube live stream. Lucy's in the studio thanks to Wallace Cinemas. Movies are better at Wallace, SA's home of big screen magic and entertainment. Visit wallace.com.au. Morning to you, Luce. Good morning. Here she is, our very own Margaret Pomerantz. I think Margaret is far more comprehensive than I am and watches the, her films in much more detail than I do. <laughs> yeah, but she watches contemporary films. Your, your, your angle is you're watching films from a long time ago. No, no, my angle is films I've never seen but should have. Mm. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah, and, and a lot it's of the time... You're a blank canvas. A lot of the time, I'll admit, I've got to be doing something else at the same time. Okay. I wouldn't admit like that. Like producing a radio <laughs> program. I would have left that out. Yeah. That's right. I was... well, that's where Margaret's only got one job. Yeah. You? you had one job, Margaret Pomerant. Mm. Yeah. Anyway, the Italian job from 1969. It has got everything, this film. Cockney accents, an international crime, a hectic plan to commit that crime, and an ending that doesn't really conclude anything. Uh, it is also a fabulous advertisement for the Mini Cooper. There is a car chase <laughs> yep. at the end that is probably too long. It goes for, honestly, about seven minutes. Um, and I think we see most of Turin, the city in Italy, but it was pretty good cinematography and stunt work for the 1960s. Unfortunately, the actual quality of the film version I saw wasn't the best because I wasn't willing to pay for it on top of my subscriptions because it was another one of those. Oh, right. You, you pay for your streaming service, but then you also pay to rent the movie from said So it was a bit streaming. washed out. So I watched a, a different version. It was a little bit washed out, a little bit grainy. What was it, a VHS? B Were you watching it on beta? No, Will. I watched it legally on a free service somewhere. <laughs> yeah. No, I understand that. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, it spoiled the experience a little bit, but it was still very entertaining. Three stars for Michael Caine. Good one. Speaking of Michael Caine, here he is. Five. <laughs> <laughs> three. Two. One. Go. You're only supposed to blow the bloody doors off. It was nice to put that yeah, uh, in quote context. in context yesterday. I think all movies should be shot in Italy. I think movies are always better when Italy is the, is the backdrop. I don't know why. Mm. I think it's the best country in the world. Any time a movie is in Italy, I'm in. It's, it's Never good. been. Never been to Italia. Beautiful place and beautiful place to shoot a film. Turin. You've been to Turin? I haven't been to Turin. Which part of Italy Torino. is Turin in? North. North. Yeah, okay. Close I went to, to the Switzerland. Switzerland. I went to North. Hmm. Austria. Beautiful places. Great stuff, as always, Lois. Do it all again next week. Pity about the old usual suspects. That's worth yeah, a look. That's, that's a movie everyone needs to see. Mm. Hey, stick around, folks. Um, there is so much uh, anger and, uh, and, and sadness in Sterling at the moment for these businesses and all of the workers that have been affected by the rat bag actions of these two stupid young kids who um, we don't know anything about how or why or whether this was some sort of prank or dare gone wrong or if they're just a couple of bloody-minded little troublemakers who deliberately wanted to set a building alight. But um, there's another issue that we have identified, um, as is often the case, thanks to one of our listeners. Mm. Um involving uh, similar mayhem uh, in the southern suburbs of Adelaide. Uh, and we're going to be talking to the people affected by that on the other side of 8.30. Before it's with the chef, before it's on your plate, before it's on your lips, that sensational cut of beef, lamb, pork or poultry was in the hands of a great butcher. My Butcher, feeding 250,000 South Australians every week. The pleasure's all theirs, and luckily, they're all ours. 100% locally owned and operated since 1999. My Butcher, meet with care. You can do just about anything online. Shop, meet new friends, watch reruns of your favourite TV shows or movies. But there's one thing you should never do online, and that's your will. From the simplest to the most complex wills and estate plans, Donlan Lawyers can answer your questions and help carry out your final wishes. For wills and estate planning, visit DonlanLawyers.com, Hindmarsh Square, Adelaide and Ocean Street, Victor Harbour.
Now, there's a group of people that we all really admire, and that's the people or families caring for loved ones with a disability, young or old, and providing full-time care in the home. You're right, uh, but it does raise the question, who cares for the carer? Because it's a big job with long hours and carers can feel guilty about taking a well-needed break. So that's where Arana steps in, by creating opportunities. Respite care during holiday periods is a great opportunity for people with a disability to start practising their independent skills, either in the home or away from it. And the chance to meet new people or explore new places and experiences, all with the support to do it safely. This can also be a stepping stone to living independently. So if you want to understand all of your options and ask a lot of questions, speak to the experts and search aranaonline.com.au. It's Ian Healy, and I'm here to talk to you about back pain and Kiza. If you're one of the 80% of Australians who suffer from back pain, it's tempting to do nothing. But this can cause weaknesses down the road. The best place to start with back pain is exercise, and the best place to exercise is Kiza. Kiza's physios and Swiss-designed strength training equipment help you build strength in a supervised environment. I go to Kiza, and you can too, at our new clinic in Norwood. Book your initial assessment at kiza.com.au. Get saving this month at City Discount Tyres. Grab three Falcon Zeke ZE310R passenger car tyres and get the fourth tyre absolutely free. Experience top-notch performance with exceptional grip on both wet and dry surfaces. Steer your way to citydiscounttires.com.au for even more great deals. City Discount Tyres. We're driven by value. This is Adelaide's 5AA. Sunny and 22 with the 8.30 News. I'm Kendall Brantick. Hydrotherapy at Physio Extra Marion has individual sessions and classes claimable on private health and NDIS. Shop owners haven't been allowed in yet to see what's left of their stores after Sunday's inferno at the Stirling Village Shopping Centre. The damaged bills climbed to $25 million. Two teenage boys have been charged with arson. Giselle Fitzner from Stirling Variety Meats has told David and Will they're still trying to process what's happened. We don't know what they are thinking about with in regards to salvaging those shops. Us as business owners, without Woolworths there... How viable is our business to continue? A car went up in flames at Broadview early this morning. The Holden Commodore was parked in a driveway on Tarakan Avenue. It's been extensively damaged. Police are investigating. Several gunshots were fired into a fence at Salisbury Downs last night. It happened on Spain's Road just before 10. Senior Constable Jane Cullinan says luckily no one was injured. A witness reported seeing a small dark coloured hatchback leaving the scene and heading towards Salisbury Highway. Crime scene investigators did attend the scene last night and investigations are continuing, but the incident is not believed to be random. A manhunt's underway in Belgium's capital after two people were shot dead in a suspected terrorist attack. Footage shows a man chasing Swedish football fans into a building before gunning them down. He's still at large. The Euro 2024 football qualifier between Sweden and Belgium has been abandoned. The crowd was told to stay inside the stadium. Israel's defence ministers warning the conflict with Hamas will be long and the price will be high as Gaza falls into a humanitarian crisis. Troops are preparing to launch their ground offensive as they fight to bring back civilians being held hostage by militants. Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu says they're working to get almost 200 people home. To all the families, we don't stop any effort in order to bring them back. Our brothers and sisters, people, men... Women, children, babies, all those who were abducted by these satanic people. While 45 Australians stuck in the Palestinian territory of Gaza have made contact with the federal government as they try to escape the conflict zone. About 1,200 Australians have now left Israel on a series of repatriation flights, but due to security concerns, further evacuations have been stopped for now. A Jetstar flight at Sydney Airport bound for Melbourne has been forced to return to the terminal after passengers expressed security concerns about the Mideast crisis. Flight JQ501 was taxiing on the runway this morning when a passenger said they wanted to get off due to a bad back and then other passengers began shouting about the crisis in the Middle East. Cherie was on board and says it was concerning. The staff actually handled it quite well. They, they were walking around answering everybody's questions and making sure that they were heard. 
And, yeah, I guess that's why the pilot decided to get everybody off because everybody was quite concerned. Mm. It was very unusual. And a multi-million dollar super yacht owned by mining magnate Clive Palmer's run aground off the coast of Singapore. The 56-metre boat named Australia remains stranded on Sentosa Island. The area where it stopped is marked as five metres deep on navigational charts. Turning to 5AA Sport. There's plenty of stock ready for immediate delivery on Mitsubishi Triton from Agostino Mitsubishi, Nailsworth and Elizabeth. Here's Tom Wren. Thank you, Kendall. Aussie spinner Adam Zampa has bounced back to form in a big way, helping the side to a comfortable five-wicket win against Sri Lanka in the World Cup in Lucknow. Zampa took four for 47 as Australia dismissed their opponents for 209, a target they chased down in the 36th over. Zampa admits he's had a slow start to the tournament, but is hopefully now building towards his best. Personally, not at my best. Yeah, I felt like, particularly last game, I could have could have bowled a little bit better. You know, my role's to take wickets and haven't quite been doing that to make it easier for the death, death guys. So I feel like I, I'm a good critic of myself and feel like I can be doing better, but yeah, nice to be on the, on the better end of the result tonight. Yeah, good result. That audio thanks to Fox. Meantime, South Australia will resume at 3 for 57 on day three of its Shield clash against New South Wales at Adelaide Oval. The Redbacks leading by 167 runs overall. Well, Port Football boss Chris Davies remains hopeful deals will be struck on the final day and a half of the trade period. Asava Ratagalia and Brandon Zerk Thatcher chief among those deals. Boxing great Jeff Fennick is tipping Tim Zhu to take the United States by storm after dominating all that have come before him. After thumping Brian Mendoza, Zhu is eyeing off a long-awaited fight with Jamel Charlo, about which could see him crowned undisputed world champion. Fennick has told Wide World of Sports the 28-year-old is the real deal. He's getting better and better and more and more confident. Yeah, and, um, yeah he's, like, he's taking fights that he doesn't need to take. He's fighting the best out there and he's not just beating him, he's just tearing him apart. And that is the 5AA Sport. Now to the traffic. Louver House, the leaders in turning your outdoor space into a great entertainment area with an opening and closing roof. Roads are really working well this morning, which is excellent. Freeway, looking the goods from Bridgewater through to Glen Osmond. Northern Connector, accident a breakdown free. Dover Lane closed this morning at Norwood, the parade near Queen Street, speeds at 40 and sluggish at the moment, South Road at Edwardstown. Cameras this morning, Cliff Street, Glen Gowry, and got one setting up right now, Dunrobin Road at Warradale. Barbie season's finally here and barbecues galore are firing up some big deals with up to 30% off big brand barbecues and up to 60% off outdoor furniture in store and online. Adelaide's most accurate traffic on 5AA. Beaumont's new showroom is now open at Seaford Meadows with 25% off all tiles this Saturday only. Sunny and 22 today, sunny again tomorrow, 26, up to 30 on Thursday and partly cloudy for Friday, 27. At the moment, 12. More news as it happens on 5AA. Breakfast on 5AA, David Penberthy and Will Goodings. Know someone finishing school and looking for an apprenticeship or a traineeship? Visit maxima.com.au. 23 to 9 behind closed doors, not too far away. Fuel Watch is going to become a pretty critical segment over the course of the coming months, certainly if the crisis in the Middle East broadens. There's been some pretty catastrophic speculation that's going on about the oil barrel price potentially getting above a dollar, $150, which at a pump, at a Bowser price, would put it above $2.50. Okay. Here in, in Adelaide, uh, for example, Which means food will go up. That's all exactly. There's the flow and effects and and, um, uh, and the rest of it. Now that that is a catastrophic prediction. We hope the conflict doesn't broaden. Which but is that w would mean Iran's involved, Syria's involved. That's right. It's a all in sh shamozzle. What you almost said would be absolutely right. Mm. Uh, the fuel watch, thanks to uh, the excellent RA app, something you should download so you can make sure you avoid any of those sorts of uh, supply shocks that, that can pop out. Find the cheapest fuel in an instant and download it from your app store today. Uh, it's it, it's expensive right now. Uh, you can get it slightly less than that, but it's not huge discounts. Um, everywhere is above the $2 range. So cheap looks like this. Uh, X Convenient Semaphore Road at Exeter is $2.9.5. The Ampole Belair Road Mitchum's $2.8.5. There is one place that is completely bucking the trend, and we salute them. The X Convenience Main North Road Jeps Cross, $1.77.5. So get in there and buy every last drop and you'll be saving yourself a small fortune at the moment. The cheapest diesel is the ex-convenience on OG Road at Clemzig. That is $2.4.9. We received a text message earlier on the Dutton's text line 
about a situation in Happy Valley at the moment where the shopping centre is under redevelopment. Now, the local cafe is currently housed in a temporary shipping container out the front. It's been the subject of not just um, multiple break-in attempts, but there's also been attempted fires. Uh, the construction site has been hit um, as well. Now, apparently the police caught some youths who were, who were doing all of this uh, mayhem um, last week, um, but it was hit again on Saturday. Uh, we have Matt on the line, who is the owner of the Gooby Goose Cafe, uh, the Happy Valley Cafe in, in question. Matt, thank you so much for, for joining us. Can you walk us through the, the, the problems that you've been having there in Happy Valley? Um, well, first of all, thanks, Dave and Will, for having the time to have me. Not at all, mate. Um, uh, so, yeah, basically, it started off the first week of holidays. We on a, on a Tuesday morning, we were broken into and had some cash taken. And, you know, you kind of go, all right, well, look, you know, it's, unfortunately, it shouldn't be, but it's part of business. You know, you got to you have to just wear it and move on. It wasn't much, so I kind of left it, called the police, and they were took a, a statement. Um, then it was on the... The, the next Saturday, so five days later, not even, um, they, they broke in, um, they trashed the place, um, stole stole what they could steal, um, and then attempted to start a fire. It, um, what? And not even just that, throughout the whole community, they slashed anywhere up to 20, 25 cars, they're, they're all like most of their tyres. It was, yeah, it smashed windshields. It was just, it was anarchy. Unbelievable. So, um... In terms of the, the, do you have any sense as to how many of these these kids were doing this? Yeah. Um, so when I spoke to the police, um, and we've got some CC footy, uh, CCTV footage of them, uh, there was five five kids, um, and my understanding was all five were arrested. I'm, I think that was on Thursday. Unfortunately, they were bailed. Well, like not unfortunately, sorry, they were bailed. Um, they. Uh, yeah, Bell Bell, and two of them um, came back on Saturday morning at five in the morning, um, proceeded to break in again and cause another few hundred dollars worth of damage. Um, <laughs> thankfully, a, a, a neighbour across the road wow. um, heard it and um, chased one of them down and apprehended him and um, gave him to the police. And uh, it was one of the kids who was um, ca ca uh, only arrested Thursday night. You are kidding. Don't, don't, do, you, do you know if he got bail again? I'm not a hundred percent sure, but I did hear that he did. Again, he got it again. I, I, I don't. I'm not hundred percent <laughs> sure, but I did hear that he got it again. Man, but I yeah. reckon a lot of our listeners, mate, would have thought you were very generous deleting the word "unfortunately" yeah. earlier. I think the, the the fact that now he's done it, he's done it a second time, while on bail, and still gets bail after that. That's crazy. Yeah, look, I, I've spoken to, um, I had a meeting with Matt Cook and Aaron Thompson, the two local politicians in the area on um, Wednesday. And, like, I, I uttered my frustration with them, with the, the justice of, like, kids who are running amok. Um, and, look, the last thing I want to do is send kids to jail for the small things, right? Yeah, sure. Um, but end of the day, you know, we, we've got a community who doesn't know what's happening to these kids once they are caught. As far as you ask any person on the street, and even you ask some police, they're under the impression they just get a slap on the wrist and off they go again. And like us in the community, just want to know what's what what is being uh, what efforts being made to make sure these kids aren't causing more issues. How because old do you I, think they are, Matt? Uh, well, I know for a fact they're fourteen. Fourteen. Yeah, the youngest one was thirteen on with the fire. Yeah. Is your sense this? This sounds like these are just sort of random acts of, of mischief. They're not, they're not targeted yeah, anyway. You haven't had any issues no, with it. No, 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 no. I, I, I put. I, I'm, I'm one of those people who likes to give back to the community. I sponsor the local school with their basketball program. Um, I, I try to help out people mm. in the area as much as I can. And when, um, when I got broken into and a fire started on Saturday. Um, I also got a phone call saying that the um, the childcare centre at Happy Valley was um, uh, well. They attempted to break into that, so I, oh. I've put my foot down and um, kind of made my I don't know. I've kind of just said that I'm going to take responsibility of, for the community and just going to make sure that you know something is going to happen with these kids or even just just in kids in general. This this is becoming an issue, and as much as people are saying that you know what well, I've been told that crime is down with kids, I I, I don't see it.
Yeah, a lot of people don't see it, mate. Hey, um, yeah. you sound like a really community-minded and level-headed guy, Matt. It yep. must be frustrating enough dealing with the fact that your shopping centre is being redeveloped anyway and all of the dislocation that that causes without all of this piled on top of it too. Yeah, yeah. Oh, look, you know, we, we've got a, a shop fit-out cost that's going to be close to a quarter of a million dollars. Um, and, you know, like, we, we're just a small fair. Like, we just had our, um, our second daughter only a month ago and we live in O'Sullivan Beach, so we're not exactly dripping with cash. Mm, um, mm. We, we've put ourselves at great risk to make to make a cafe that we think is going to be amazing for, you know, for the area. So for these things to happen, you know, even though it's, I think it's only totaled close to six or $7,000 worth of damage, it's still six or $7,000 we don't have. Yeah, um, for sure. Can you, you know, do you feel like you've got to try and make the shop more secure somehow now as well? Oh, I, I have. I, I've, um, I've uh, bolted everything down. I, it, like windows that were meant to be windows now are basically just, you know, structural timber on them. And, you know, it's, it's, it's impossible to break in now, but it's, you know, I thought that before as well, you know, I, I thought we had some great padlocks. We had everything as secure as we could, but, you know, look, if someone wants to get out of jail, they're going to get out of jail, aren't they? Yeah. I've got to say, I don't know how you feel about it, Matt, but I, you know, you feel, you feel anger and frustration towards those kids, but more, I think more so, you know, you're, you're a parent, Will's a parent, I'm a parent. I know my older kids, they're, what, 19, no, 20 and 17. I know where they are 24 hours a day, every day. Most parents, they know exactly where their kids are. So what are the parents of these kids doing? Uh, well, the the parent who, um, with the, the kids on uh, Saturday morning, like just been, um, were unaware that her kid was out. Um, and like, I, like, I just want it to be known. I'm not having a go at police here at all. Police, the police that we've dealt with throughout all of this has been fantastic. Most of them are customers of ours. Um, and they're really, really supportive. Um, I actually feel really bad for them because once these kids are out on bail, obviously they have to be home by, well, they, they I think they have to be home by a certain time or have to be home all the time. So when they're doing a police check and they're making sure that they're home, you know, that they're, they're wasting time and resources on that kind of stuff when they should be out helping patrol the area like yeah. not just our area but you know all the areas around south of adelaide and like sturt you know sturt police station um where the officers are from they've been fantastic and mm. yeah so it's just it's just us as a community and as even shop owners we we just want to know what um why are the courts allowing you know, bail after bail, it, it, it's it's ridiculous. And then after Sterling, um, you know, to be bailed literally that same day is um, it's confusing for us in the community. And we want to we want to <laughs> know why. Ever. Yeah, we we just want to know why we're not being protected from kids who are like yeah, causing so much damage. Someone could have been killed on. Yeah, completely. Yeah, killed, yeah. yeah. we we got a off the record confirmation that they did get bail again. <laughs> Unbelievable. Hey, Matt, great talking to you, mate, and we'll stay in touch on this. Yeah. Um, yeah, and everyone in, 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 in the vicinity of Happy Valley, head into... Yeah. G am, we, am I pronouncing it right? Gooby yeah, Goose Cafe? Yeah, yeah Gooby Goose. Head into goose, the Goose. Yeah. What's your, yeah, your go-to <laughs> item, mate, apart from your coffees and that? What, do you do any toasted sangers or anything like that too? At the moment, mate, we're limited on power, so we can only really just sling out coffees and some biscuits at the moment but once we come back we're hoping to have a full breakfast menu um even the guy who caught one of those kids i've, I've said to him that he's got him and his wife got a breakfast on me so <laughs> <laughs> well matt you sound like a great bloke uh, everyone should get in and support the gooby goose cafe uh, because something's broken so we're gonna well, we're gonna you know shopping it center it's, it's the juvenile justice system yeah because one ele element of it like and, and as matt himself said you know we're not saying lock these kids up and throw mm. away the key they haven't they haven't, you know, shot anyone or, or, or done anything spectacularly heinous, but they have they have done enough, and they already they are they are already on a path to doing things that are more heinous. Mm. Now, if we can have this utter revolving door system where they get they do all this stuff, they get caught on Thursday, they get let out on Friday, and two of them are back there Saturday. If anybody in the working in that area of the law wants to tell our listeners and us that any of that makes sense, good luck to you. Yeah. That is just that is that is actually dictionary definition beyond a joke. Well, how often is the is our six forty police report? Fourteen year old kid steals car. Fourteen year old kid holds up Uber driver. 
We had 14 year old mm. kids burn down a shopping centre at Stirling. Like, is this what it looks like when it's working? Well, two things that, that I, I wonder what element of the punishment slash education these kids get goes to giving them a meaningful insight into the impact of their actions plus the existence of an alternative way of behaving. Mm. For example, instead of trying to steal something from a coffee shop, you could actually work at a coffee shop cleaning dishes and get $20 an hour. And by the end of the day, you'll have 140 bucks that you can spend accordingly. So there's, there's that part of it, like actually getting in their faces more mm. as opposed to the rock up, legal aid acts for you, you know, you're free to go, you know, with, with no, no insight into the consequences of what you've done. But beyond that, how can we come down like a ton of bricks on their parents? Because these parents are bloody hopeless. Well, like, they're, they're clearly not in the picture, are they? No, no, they've checked out. They've totally checked out. Which they out. probably don't work, so the kids don't, you know, you, you go to what's the impact or the alternative. Well, I've never seen anyone with an alternative. So well, that's it, exactly. That's the so cycle of... How do, you get, how do you show them that there are alternatives? Because their parents aren't showing them. Their parents don't even know where they are. I mean, 14. What are you, year nine? Mm. It's just pathetic. Getting lots of texts on this on the Dutton's text on. We'll get to some of those in a moment. First, let's check traffic. Thanks to Keyser. You tired of back pain? Time to try Keyser, K I E S E R dot com. Thanks, Will. Roads are working really well today. The freeway accident, a breakdown free from Bridgewater through to Glen Osmond. Nice change. Southern Expressway looking good. It is starting to get busy, the parade at Norwood. And we've got a lane closed this morning at Torrentville, South Road near Ashwan Parade for Works. You'll find cameras this morning, Murray Street to Nunder and West Street at Ascot Park. Don't let joint pain or injuries get in the way of your sporting goals, Bauer finds a range of German-made sports compression and supports can help. Call or visit 13knees.com.au. Adelaide's most accurate traffic on 5AA. On 5AA Mornings today, we'll speak with Attorney General Kaya Ma on the future of the SA Voice and the Sterling Fire, one of the businesses affected. Those stories, lots more as well. Your calls, I'm Matthew Pantelis. Looking forward to your company on 5AA Mornings from 9. Hi. I'm Lynn Andrews. The Lynn Andrews team have seen a lot of change in real estate over the past 50 years, but one thing remains unchanged. Our passion to help people invest in their future. To build strong property portfolios in either the residential or the commercial sectors. Our commitment to property investment over the years means we have a wealth of knowledge to share. We're here to help you. Visit lynnandrews.com. G'day everyone, Cornsey here. Now, I know a great team and I see one, and the South Australian hydraulic team I rate the highest is BL Shipway. I've known them for a long time. David Shipway is one of the best blokes you'll ever meet. BL Shipway, they've been looking after your hydraulic and pneumatic needs since 1953 with brands like Ryco, Rexroth, Enipac, Hydac, Oilpath, EasyFit, and many more. And if you can't get to them, they'll send a Ryco 24 7 van to you anytime, anywhere. BLShipway.com.au, the South Australian team you can. Count on. Now, organising a memorial for a treasured family member can seem like a lot, but not if you speak with Tim from Adelaide Memorials. For over 40 years, Adelaide Memorials have kept the memory and spirit alive for thousands of South Aussie families with beautifully designed headstones and plaques. Tim will sit with you to show you all the wonderful ways to memorialise the life of your loved one. There is no set and forget or rush, just empathy and genuine attention to detail. And because Tim also has a background in architecture, and the headstones and plaques he designs are often customised to reflect an individual's life. Now, that can be to include the lyrics to one of their favourite songs or even a headstone carved into the shape of a guitar. And currently there's room on their team for an experienced craftsperson with a trade background. So if you're interested in joining this small, passionate team, get in touch with Tim. Adelaide Memorials for extra personal service. Visit adelaidememorials.com.au. 5AA Breakfast is streaming live right now. To watch, simply head to 5AA on Facebook or YouTube. Breakfast on 5AA, David Penberthy and Will Goodings. Jobs, apprenticeships, traineeships and careers. Maxima can help. Learn more today at maxima.com.au. 7 to 9, flood of Dutton's texts following our chat with Matt, the owner of the Gooby Goose Cafe down south. It's been attacked not once but twice by young kids the second time whilst they're out on bail. Uh, the text is scathing. Uh, one here, Don in Parra Hills. Hey guys, parents should be held accountable for their children's actions until the age of 18. It's about their upbringing. Thanks, Don. Uh, uh, Jane with a Y says, 
uh, that, um, Matt, you were right the first time. It is very unfortunate. In fact, it's disgusting. When are we going to get tough on this crap? And they want to increase the age of criminality. The government does not hear us on these issues. And she signs off by saying, Matt, you're a very generous man. Um, one here from Raf saying, are they the same 14-year-olds that decide to light a campfire at Woolies in Stirling? Well, no, I don't think they are. They're different ones. They're, no. No, they're not the same. There's no suggestion they're the same, no. No. Um, but people are seething and deeply, deeply frustrated about this. Mm. The, the government, we heard uh, Matt Pantelis has got the Attorney General Kyle Ma coming on the show. The government should actually um, have a, like, speak to the, the relevant youth court about the fact that mm. someone was given bail and then re-offended and ask them to, for a please explain about that because that's, that's a cock up. Yeah, absolutely. So it's not on police. None of this is on no, police. Yeah. Well, the cops are just, they're doing everything they, they can. Being a copper, you must spend a lot of your time just driving around the car going, oh, here we go Time again. Time to round up the usual suspects. Yeah, totally. Yeah. Um, I know you've had a lot of fun with this project. Over the next few weeks, David is uh, getting out and about meeting some of South Australia's great food producers and suppliers. This is it. You are turning into Anthony Bourdain. And it's part of 5AA's <laughs> Festival of Food. Well, I'm here with Tony, the Managing Director of My Butcher. Tony, it's so good to meet you, mate. Lovely being here at your, uh, at your headquarters as well. Tell us a bit about the company. You've been going for, what, 25 years, you said? Uh, yes, uh, Pembo. We started in 1999. So uh, in, a, in a few months, it'll be, it'll be 25 years. And you've got about, what, 60 people working here? Yes, uh, with staff and contractors. So tell us about My Butcher, because from, from what I understand, it's in your blood, isn't it? This is, this is a bit of a family <laughs> thing for you guys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, uh, we've been in the farming side of things since 1842. My <laughs> great-great-grandfather arrived in 1837 with three other mates when I was 16 to 18 years old. The thing that I really like about your, your business, and I was looking through the products, and being a bit of a food nut, I immediately recognised a lot of those brands as being real top shelf, top shelf beef, top shelf pork. Quality is obviously hugely important to you guys. Absolutely, it's first and foremost. So being a butcher and a country boy by, by, by trade, um, I've got to be able to eat what I sell. So <laughs> if I don't like it, it's not going to work. Yeah. And, um, you know, that, that's been a focus on us since we, we started. Also, that passion of being local is actually having local brands. Well, look, it's great to meet you, Tony. Um, it's a great South Australian success story, and in a state that loves its food, my butcher playing a hugely important role in putting good stuff on our tables and in our mouths. Thank you for that. Brilliant. Geez, I bet they had to twist your arm to go out and to record that. <laughs> I, would have, I would have just walked there from home. And give up. It's sensational. All right, oh, st the, stuff, the stuff they've got. Geez, some Sounds of that, good. Some of that wagyu from the South East, unbelievable. Time to go behind closed doors. Thanks to Aussie Fast Transport Solutions, Interstate Freight Distribution Warehousing and local Adelaide couriers. Call Aussie Fast 13 13 64. And when we get behind Talking Adelaide Sports, this is the Saturday Sports Show. Yes! Oh, welcome, folks, to the Saturday Sports Show. Kaji with you and hope you can stay with us right through until midday. Studley's still on, 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 on annual leave, but I'm always here because, let's face it, I'd be on the air even if I had to pedal a generator to keep the power on. And let me introduce you to my fellow <laughs> panellists, young Sam and Tugwell Tuggers. G'day, KG. And, of course, at Port Adelaide legend, Warren Gary Treadway. Treaders. G'day, KG. Back by popular demand. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's right. And far too many voices for a Saturday sports show. Let's face it, Treaders. That's true, Far yeah. too many, yeah. <laughs> I can tell you that it will be hard this morning to know what point we're making because we'll all be making it at the same time. Oh, yeah, oh, that goes without saying. There's no we'll doubt about that. That, I wonder if Corns will even be coming back now. Let's make jokes about him not returning and me taking over. <laughs> and now let me make jokes about not being able to work the panel. That's really good. Oh, yeah. Well, you couldn't do any worse than Stuntley, that's for sure. Let's all laugh about that at the same time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and Tug is being so young, we should ask him how old he is so we can make fun of that as well. I'm 27. He's only 27, so a few ageism jokes would go astray, KG. <laughs> that is for sure, Trenders. He's young enough to be my son. Grandson, I'd say. Let's all laugh about that. <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> You're almost a work experience kid, you say, so young Tuggers. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> well, what a week it has been. The AFL trade period. Boring, boring, boring. Does it go too long? 
Yeah, it does. Yeah, they're trying to make it like the Americans. It's just not the same. That's right. And and and, and now that we've 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 started talking about sport, we've all stopped talking. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Matt Patel is coming up. We'll catch you tomorrow morning from six. How easily could you save hundreds off your energy bills? That easy. Switch out your gas or electric hot water system for an energy efficient heat pump with EcoVantage. Then sit back and save up to 70% on your water heating costs and get it supplied.